Okay. Uh, test, test. Oh boy. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, filters are correct. Okay, so so everyone's hearing me now. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, well, I guess I'll go over it again. Welcome to my first ever stream. <laughs> Expect some technical difficulties. <laughs> That's the third time I've said it now, actually. <laughs> oh, all right, so. Wait, man, I'm trying to remember what I already said. Uh, this is Brigandine Legend of Renericia, just released on Steam at 4 a.m. this morning. Um, right, I'm going to jump through the tutorialization briefly. And... Yeah. After that, we're going to jump into the game. And I will be spending a good amount of time discussing my game while we play through this one. Just because, uh, yeah, this is the sequel to the game that heavily inspired my game project. And now my controller's not working. Oh, no, no, okay, I just can't control it yet because tutorial. Got it. Okay, current tutorial section. Progress is indicated by the... Okay, that's fine. 13 sections. Cool. Press the A button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't move anything? Oh wow, they're literally going to make me push each button. <laughs> Alright, uh, we might be skipping this. Okay, I can use the A button. Okay, there we go. Now they've given... Yeah, yeah, we're, uh... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna not do this. Like... Tutorials are important in games. I, I guess this is a great place to show what I'm going to be doing for this entire playthrough. So, tutorials are very important for games to introduce people who have no idea how the game works. But you don't ever want to be so hand-holdy. Like, that literally made me push one button for like, what was it, like 10 slides of text? Oh boy. All right, and hi, Indabil. Thank you for joining me. Um, I forget whether it was before or after I fixed the mic, but I don't have a dual monitor set up yet, so this is actually a little bit uh, creative. I'm using my phone to watch the chat. So if I seem to be ignoring you, I'm not. <laughs> it's just uh, a workaround I'm using for the time being. So we'll see how the streaming goes, and if, I'm, if I really enjoy it, I'll definitely be looking into getting dual monitors so I can make it less uh, of a headache. All right, so let us begin the main mode, and I'll just, I'll do my own tutorialization for those of you who are not familiar with the Brigandine series. But first, a cutscene. Wale ra ga daichi, Luna Jio. Kono sekai wo otozure shi sonata yo, miru ga i. Kono chide wa. イニシエの彼方より人ときもマナの社はが剣を持つ手には人力を超えた大いなる力様々に繰り出されるやがてルーンの騎士その歴史は 
幾度か繰り返されることとなったそんなルーンの騎士たちにとって最も大切なものが五つのブリガンダインだったその鎧あるいは装身具にはそれぞれルーンの神から授かった五つのマナストーンが組み込まれてあったのじゃブリガンダインを身につけたルーンの騎士はそれはそれは他の騎士を圧倒したのじゃよ大陸の覇権をかけた戦いは師匠ルーナジア戦記に克明に綴られ同時に戦いを通して我らが知り得たある大切な真実も記されることとなっただがあるルーンの騎士によってルーナジア全土が統一されると師匠はまるでそれを見届けたように戦火の中に消滅してしまったのだこの世界を訪れしそなたよ今ブリガンダインは正義高潔自由誇りそして自我の五つそなたにはそのいずれかを身にまといあるいは身にまとうことなく歴史に習い大陸制覇に向かう六つの道があるそしてそなたがルーナジアの各地を支柱に収めてゆくたびに師匠ルーナジア戦記の失われたページはよみがえってくることだろうしかるに統一を果たした時そなたは知るのだこのルーナジアで起きたすべてのそしてあらゆる物語を。Oh, that's a beautiful map. Five nations and one tribe plunge the land of Renercia into a new era of chaos. Six rulers and their rune knights throw themselves into the flames of war, each with their own hopes and expectations. Okay, and now I get to choose my leader and nation. That's actually pretty cool how they have the highlighted cutouts to show what region each、um, nation is in. But it's kind of weird that it doesn't show how many actual territories each nation controls. Which,、uh, for, for the Brigandine series, you, the resources you get,、uh, I guess I should just mention it in case you're watching on the VOD afterwards instead of、uh, in the chat. So, this game is kind of like if Risk. Had night, or, you know, heroes and monsters fighting in tactical battles instead of just rolling dice to see how many troops you lose. That's, that's the best comparison I can give for somebody who has no idea about breeding. Another thing I commonly refer to it as is Baby's first grand strategy game, because it's very, very lightly in the grand strategy genre. But yeah, so the number of territories you have. Determines how much mana you get, which determines how many monsters you can summon. And yeah, as,、uh, as my thumbnail indicated, I've decided I'm going to play the Republic of Gim Gimel. You know, I probably should have picked one I could actually pronounce. I'm just going to call it the Republic of Gimme. So, we have Eliza Uzala, the daughter of Alden Uzala, the veteran 15th president of the Republic. The Sword of Ange. <coughs> Excuse me. The Sword of Anj awakens upon realizing the danger the country faces and tests her with a life changing mission. Previously a ballerina performing with a secret identity, she must now accept her fate to don the Brigandine of Glory and perform on the stage of battle. Alright. And we're just gonna knock it up to hard. I'm not gonna do custom.、Uh, I, have, I have heard the AI is not great, but we'll see if they improved it for the Steam release. And yeah, here goes nothing. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, which one's... okay. Guide will play when you take an action for the first time. This can be configured to be skipped in advance. Skip this guide. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to fault him for the localization problems. Like, that one was a little bit ambiguous. Are we going to have another cutscene? Okay, no, I can, I can pause for a moment. Um, I noticed the game is really, really hand-holdy. And... While it would inform a player who has no idea what they're doing, it generally either comes off, you know, grading on people who know what they're doing or have half a clue of what they're doing, and even people who have no clue are liable to skip through it if it just takes too much, if the, if the burden of access to the understanding of how to play the game takes too much effort and is too taxing. So, that's my only critique so far, other than the amazing amount of time it's taking to actually get to the game. In the self-proclaimed birthplace of the Rune Knights, the sitting present. Okay, wow, this is slow. <laughs> okay. Whoa. No, I didn't want to skip, I wanted to speed up. It says hold to speed up in the corner. Oh boy. Alright, um, there's, I think there's an option I saw in the options menu to speed this up. Alright, Kane looks like a pretty generic knight. It may be prudent to begin preparations for the election of the next president. Alright. We're mostly here for strategy, so... Okay, so this guy doesn't have faith in our leader being a leader. Good to know. Alright. And yeah, Gustava, Gustava is like a fan favorite. But I figured I'd play this one. Um, in part because just... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's because everyone, from what I've seen, like everyone seems to start with Gustava. So I was like, I'm going to start with somebody else. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of talking. <laughs> so this is the equivalent of just exposition like a, a movie that starts with 20 minutes of people talking about what has happened up to the point where the movie starts the characterization is good for any story but it needs to be a little bit more either spread out or just delayed so that you actually start playing the game a little bit before Oh, another cutscene. Or partial cutscene. Okay. Garrulous. Oh, did I did I miss a big word just because I was busy talking about how long it's taking to get to the game? Huh. Alright, Jill, sorry, have a good night. Generic dancer. Jill, who is Jill? Is Jill, like, the secret identity of our leader? Hired guard, okay. So I recognize her, she's the leader of the Shinobi tribe. So we've got one of the leaders apparently talking to the other leader. Yeah. Daughter of Chief Della of the Shinobi. Okay. Ooh. And the worst part is now that I've seen how slow the tech speed is, I want to go in the options and make it go faster. And so now I'm just getting impatient to hurry up and make it go faster. But I don't want to just outright skip this. Like... Oh boy. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's exactly what I was saying. Like it's fine to have exposition at the start of a game, but you have to put player activity in front of it or in between it or just have the player do more than just read for ten minutes. Like, normally I would be so happy to experience this story, but the fact that it's after I've already, like, also they're using a whole lot of proper nouns, and the only reason I know what half the proper nouns mean is because I've watched Let's Plays of the game. I, I've kept the spoilers, like, story stuff, I always just ignored it. I didn't pay attention, and since they were in Japanese, I would, you know, not understand what they were saying. But, um, I didn't ever realize it was this long to actually get to the game. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried the... So, there's the hold to speed up button. And I tried that, and it just completely skipped one of the one of the text boxes. Unless I hit the wrong button. Ah, I hit the wrong button. That's why. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So the con the confusing thing is, uh, I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller, so it said hold X to speed up and Y auto move. There's no Y, so I assumed it was the Xbox control scheme. So I hit what would have been X on the Xbox. But apparently it's act right. I swip. I swapped confirm and cancel. So that would have been. Oh, okay. So the the tooltip did not update when I changed the control scheme. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, Valkos. Uh. I know you've covered this game a lot. How much longer is this gonna go on? I mean, the, the story is interesting and all, but like, I'm not retaining any of this. I'm just, I'm going full goldfish. There's just been so much already that like I haven't had time to process it. So it's just like, there's more, there's more, there's more, <laughs> like. Uh, I think I think the the general like idea in in psychology is that like a person can only at any given time actually actively engage with I think it's like three concepts or three actions. So like whenever you just vomit exposition at people like this, it's gonna take a couple a couple times going through it to actually register everything that's going on. Which is another reason to split it up and put a little bit of gameplay in between. So, at the very least, I can, you know, get it going faster now. Now that I've figured out the... <laughs> okay. It's still going. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean... So, I'm not, I'm not just skipping because there is going to be a VOD. And I do... I do want to actually register what's going on, so what I'm what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna re-watch this portion of the VOD between this stream and the next one, just to get a better idea of the characters and get a better idea of the story. And that way also anyone who's watching this after the fact, as well as those of you in chat, have a chance to read through somewhat and you know try to get a feel for it yourself. But there's been so many proper nouns and there's just so much exposition. <laughs> oh, you can actually go back and watch the cutscenes? Records of history? Okay, that's cool. That's a, that's a nice feature. Um, and if they have that, it's especially confusing why they don't, like, intersperse some activity. Like... I mean, I'm not saying that you have to, like, play a full round of the game before they go to the next little story beat, but... <sighs> okay, so... Now we got the sword that we already know from the selection screen whenever we picked the nation. 
So that's the Sword of Ange, and it's going to, I guess, pick Eliza as the leader now. Said that the sword would appear before the Rune Knights be entrusted. Yeah, okay. So that's how she becomes the leader. The magical sword picked her. Which immediately just makes me think back to uh, Tales of Destiny, to uh, Philia and the creepy, like, old man sword that was just a pervert. And now that's just locked in my head. I should play Tales of Destiny on the channel sometime. It's such a good game. Okay, I know this is probably getting old at this point, but I'm shocked that there's even more. Is it seriously giving me the backstory of the sword at this point? Okay, we got a sorcerer dude. Cool. Last will and testament of the Molan sisters. Okay. She's making the declaration of her leadership. Please tell me this is the conclusion the, the epic into the prologue. Please. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> Some grave error. Okay, so Kane doesn't like Eliza. Got it. Okay. And the old man politely says, shut up and sit down. Have you no shame? Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna leave stuff up for like just long enough for it takes for me to speed read through it. And then I'll skip. Okay, so Kane's apparently a spoiled, petulant child that has a powerful father or something. Blackbirds, okay, they're elves, I guess. Ears. That's all I can say. Although they look, they look more like fins than So I guess fish people, maybe? Let's go. Okay. Finally, the world map. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Alright, so th thank you, Velko. So you can view all the scenes you viewed in the records. Okay. First thing I'm going to do. Options. Settings. Uh... Display events. First of all, subtitles. Fast. Wait. Okay. Um, cursor speed, normal. Yep, yep. Alright. That should help. Yeah. Ooh, we got... Okay, so that's, that's not my stream dropping frames. That's actually the game... Stuttering a little bit. Huh. Interesting. Maybe there will be some optimization patches coming. I mean, I'm using a controller, so... I don't know why it's jittery like that. In any case, uh, to the actual tutorialization. Yeah, wait for the second climax, exactly. <laughs> They, they had a couple of good moments they could have ended on that were very, like, you know, very much a, a, a good conclusion punch to the story, and then they just kept on going. But it's, it's fine. I'm sure I'll actually care about anything that was said at some point. So I'll just quickly go over the basics here. You see underneath each of the territories, there's a, a knight's helm and a dragon head. That's the number of knights and monsters in each prospective territory. So, uh, the golden crown obviously is, well, I guess it's not necessarily obvious, but that's the, that's the capital. I don't know if there's anything significant about the capital other than just how much mana it produces each round. 
Um, the flags also indicate whether or not there's troops present, which, I mean, it's a nice little touch. So the flag is blowing in the wind because there's knights there with monsters, and there's nothing here, so the flag just hangs still. And yeah, we can look around. Okay, Shinobi tribe. Oh, this is... This is this is jittery. I'll I'll mess with the options between streams. I, I'm sure it'll be fine for this one. Um, but yeah, we've got f five nations or five territories for the blue nation, which is Norzalio, I believe. Um, five nations for what appears to be the Shinobi tribe. Three, four, five, six nations for Gustava. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or was it nine? Hold on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for Mana Silesia. And then three, four, five, six for um, the pirates. I forget what they're called. Capital has additional tiles on the battlefield that give terrain bonuses like ramparts and town hexes. Okay, thank you, Valkos. Uh, no, actually, Duper, so, the, I'm assuming, based on the, the Let's Plays I've watched, that there's, there's a little bit of story interspersed throughout the game. Uh, you see at the top right corner, it says, Year 781, Season 1 out of 24. Some events, some story beats, will trigger when a certain season is reached for each nation. Or at least that's the way I understand part of it, uh, and then sometimes whenever you do certain things, like whenever a certain knight is in combat with another certain knight, there will be a little story beat there, um, and if you accomplish certain things, like capturing a particular territory with a particular unit or something like that, then there's also little story beats there. So like, there there is story mixed in throughout the entire campaign, it's just so much to start with. And this is coming from Brigandine Legend of uh, Forsena, back in 1998 on the PlayStation 1. The intro was, I think, like 10 text boxes, roughly, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, it was a very short intro. Then you did your first organized phase, which I'm about to, you know, demonstrate the organized phase. And then there was another little cutscene after the first round. And that, that just is a better way of doing it, splitting it up a little bit more. In any case, let's go ahead and move in here. So in each territory, just again, a little bit of brief tutorialization for those of you not familiar with Brigandine, you have the troops user interface, summon, which lets you summon more monsters using the mana you have. You see in the top right corner, we have mana reserves 905. So we'll be able to summon some monsters with that. Move, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. You select a knight and then you choose a territory and now they're moving. Or, you can, uh, how do I cancel that? Hmm, actually, there we go, okay. Square, got it. So, that's a strange design decision, actually. Having different button combos for moving to a different territory and canceling the move. It, uh, yeah, plenty more story to be had. Yeah, Valkos, Valkos, I have a link in the uh, description. He has done all of the campaigns. He's done guides. Like, <laughs> there's there's a lot to the game. It's, it just, it makes me sad that they've put such a barrier to entry to the actual gameplay. Um, but yeah, so move lets you redistribute your knights. Quests lets you send them on uh, different tasks with the different chevrons showing how high of a you know chance they have of getting good rewards and the symbols showing what type of rewards they can get that will mostly figure out as we go because that entire system has been modified since forcing us so I'll, I'll have to get a hang of it uh you can actually look at the battlefield that's cool and you can see where you'll spawn if you attack from different nations okay or different territories rather uh manage items yeah that's Pretty self-explanatory. Do we actually have any items? We have the Sword of Ange on Eliza, Crimson Staff on, I think his name was Mua, Glory Brigandine, 
Okay, so that's giving her 15 hit points and 15 defense. That's actually pretty significant. A steel helm. Okay, so we, we have Eliza decked out with, uh, with gear. That's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the troop interface on this particular territory just because there's one knight, so it's easier to go over. Um, yeah, so you can go through. You can select them. This knight is a fighter with a mandrake and a lizard man. You can then uh, figure out which button it is. That button. Okay, so triangle top button lets you actually look at the details. So the... Oh wow, it doesn't actually let me go over to... So I'm assuming it's the same as Forsuna in the sense that your hit points, obviously, whenever the monster reaches zero or the knight reaches zero, then they are removed from the battle, but... In Brigandine, if your monster dies, they are permanently dead. If your knight dies, they're wounded for a round. Uh, attack is a base amount plus, I think, in Forcing it, it was your attack was a base amount plus your strength, but it looks different here. Unless the base amount for lizard men are just very low. Because this thing has 57 strength and only 85 attack, so that's interesting. Uh, agility contributes to defense, and intelligence is both offensive and defensive spellcasting. Which, I've never really been a super, you know, a big fan of the idea of tying offense and defensive stats into one single number. Uh, here we go. So, Brigandine also prevents all status effects like poison and stone, however does not prevent debuffs. Thank you, Valkos. I would have never actually guessed that, and probably not taken the time to read. But yeah, you can see the skill. The monster only has the one attack. And then the profile, because more fluff. Fluff is always nice. I'll read it on my own time. But if you want to read it, you can skim through it real quick. It's really interesting that they decided to give an entire paragraph to every single monster. That's cool. In any case, moving on with the stats. So preferred terrain, you want to put them on that terrain type, they get bonuses. Magic cost is, I assume, yeah, I assume that's the rune cost for this. So the magic cost determines how much of the rune knight's strength it takes to control that monster. Upkeep mana is every month you have to pay the upkeep for every monster you have. And then rune growth is actually a new stat for me. I really wish I could go over and hover over it to see what it does. Uh, I'm sure Valkos will let me know very shortly. And yes, if you look at the knight here, you'll see... Wait, they do call it rune power. You'll see he has uh, command range 4 at the top of this little bar here, right above the cursor there. Rune power 110 out of set 174. So I could put another monster that has 64 or less cost into it very strange that they decided to call it magic cost here and rune power there. So, uh, rune growth determines how fast you level. Higher ranking means you level faster. Okay, thank you, Valkos. So it's just telling you that the 40 cost monster has a growth of A, the 70 cost monster has a growth of B. Uh, also, the Mandrake has paralyzed immunity, Hit point recovery when he's in forests. Has... Oh, that's cool. They have the little range indicators at the bottom left. And the feet with the X means they have to use it before... Or, they can't use it after moving. And if you use it, it ends their turn. As well as showing an accuracy penalty or... Um, penalty or buff. And what element... Hey, Valkos, is this, is this element added to the monster's element, or is it just kind of its own thing? And I guess Ground Sky, it's best against... The, the Numb Bite's best against Ground, and worse against Sky. Numb Powder's good against everything. And more there. Any move or passive highlighted? You can pull up details with Y. Okay. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Cool, so they have a 20% chance of inflicting Paralyze, but my question was the, uh, the element, because you see the monster here has the sword icon as the offensive element of green, the shield's the defensive element of green, but in its skills, the numbite shows no element. It's specific to that attack? Yeah, so does that mean if he's using Numbite, it just doesn't count his attack sphere? Or does the Num Powder add an extra green sphere to it? And actually, while I'm on that topic, so the element system in the game is actually one of the kind of cornerstones of the Brigandine series. The red, green, and blue orbs counter each other as you kind of figure. So, red fieriness is strong against green, which is natureiness. Green is strong against blue, which is wateriness. And blue is strong against red. So, that's kind of the, the general idea there. There's also a black and a white, which do extra damage to each other and reduce damage to the, the same type, I believe. Okay, yeah, so one, one for the element, one for the move. So, the moves add on. Cool. So yeah, the, the different moves have additional elements. Good. Good, good, good. In any case, we have spent a long time looking at all of this. Cool brave slash power break. Alright. So, any questions on that? <laughs> Just, uh... I know, like, nobody but Valkos is in the chat talking, but there's, there's apparently 98 in there, so that's cool. Any questions at all for anyone before we move on to the next bit of tutorialization? Alright, I waited for the delay. I see no questions starting. So, next bit, equipment. Every, every person seems to have four slots. Weapon, armor, helmet, and accessory. Oh wow, it also looks like the monsters have four slots as well. Cool. Yeah, in uh, in Legend of Force, and, uh, each hero could only have one item equipped. So it's good to see they expanded that. That's that's actually one of the things I did with my uh, game project, is I expanded the number of items and the different slots of items a character could equip. I, I think it's really interesting for customization purposes. Um, consume items, consumables, yeah, we don't have any. But... That's where you would use items to increase the power of a character just once, and then it's gone. Yeah, just watching the questions. All right, Ken, just just let me know if uh, if anything comes to mind. And then here is the best part about the character customization: there are class changes. So right now he's a fighter, and the fighter will be able to upgrade to knight, swordsman, swordmaster, paladin, dark knight, etc. And there's a bunch of different types. We're going to experiment with them over the course of the playthrough, so I'm not going to go over every single type right now. But, yes, there's male and female classes. The males have Fighter, Barbarian, Thief, Monk, Mage, Priest. And then the females, if we... Oh yeah, we could also rename things. Not the heroes, but the monsters we could rename. So... If anyone wants to name a monster, let me know, but I'm not going to really focus on that too much. Just going to try to see... There we go. No. Wrong. I... Class is what I was looking for. So here you can see the females have Lancer, Hunter, Bard, Dancer, Enchantress, and Cleric. And you can also see that this particular character, Patricia, has Lancer, Hunter, and Dancer grayed out because she does not meet the requirements necessary for that particular class. Does it say anywhere why? Um, I'm not actually seeing anywhere where it says what specifically is required that she doesn't have. Oh wait! Plain sight, best place to hide anything. Dancer, strength 55 or agility 50. Okay, cool. 53, agility 60. That's interesting. So, because again of the limited number of statistics, 
they obviously have to have the same statistics be required for your different classes. So, you only need two less strength, but you need ten more agility to be a hunter instead of a dancer. That's fine. It just means that, unfortunately, if you have low stats, you're just going to be super limited. As compared to if there were more different statistics, you'd be more likely to qualify for a couple of classes and just have a small number that you aren't able to take. Um, okay, so hitting the same element actually... Hitting the same element does not actually cause reduced damage. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good game. I know right now I'm just like going through the user interface and this is probably not nearly as entertaining for anyone who's already played the game or paid any attention to it. But it's it's a good game series. And I'm thinking that all I have left to go over is summoning. But before I summon, I do want to take a quick glance at who has what. Ah, there we go. So that's a new thing. This is already a uh, tier 2 monster. So whenever a monster reaches level 10, it can class up into different types. And dragons have a lot. Basically, they have a tier 2 of every element. And then they can all turn into an ancient dragon, which is just red elemental. That's a shame. Uh, but in addition to that, this monster, in the top right corner of its icon, has the little blue crystals, which mean it's what, which means it's what's called a mana miracle. So it has the highest possible stats and stat growth of that monster race. So we have really good teams, actually. I'm I'm happy to play all of these just the way they are right now. Okay, and then. I think that's all except for summoning, so let's find someone we need to summon for. Um, okay, the, this team, we have a Dancer and a Temple Knight, as well as two Unicorns, which are healers, a low-tier Frontliner, and a high-tier Frontliner. And I say tier, uh, it's actually just the cost, so generally speaking, at the same level, a Mandrake is going to be stronger than a Lizardman because it costs 30 more, which is more than half as much, you know. It's more than 50% more, so it should be stronger. Then we have a Mermaid and an Imp, which are both support classes. So I'm going to definitely summon another frontline unit here. And our choices are an Imp, a Golem, or a Rock. And you can see there's tons of stats all over every screen, but I found that I get the most enjoyment playing new strategy games by just kind of disregarding the stats and going with what I think is cool, and then just learning from what works and what doesn't. So this entire playthrough is not going to be optimal. It's going to be very much just, that guy looks cool, I'm going to do that. Um, as far as the monsters go, I do like rocks. And we do have enough room on rows here. So we're going to summon a rock for 210 mana. It's a nice summon animation. Cool. And it's a mana miracle. Streamer luck, baby. <laughs> cool. So that is the best possible rock we could ever get. Love it. Alright, so let's swap the unit over, got this guy, put him in here, and a little bit of obsessive compulsion gets us sorting everything in order of cost, beautiful. I'm very confident in this team now. It seems like it should be good enough, uh, except we need to add one more, because in Brigandine, each battle you can field up to three knights, and each knight can have up to six monsters. So. Obviously, we want to put these people that aren't at the borders onto the borders so that we can defend against attacks and attack. 
this uh, this territory has two pretty even spread of frontline and support. And uh, go on MM. Oh, GG on okay. <laughs> GG on Man of Miracle. Yeah. First summon always nice whenever things go smooth. Alright, so here in the capital we have actually quite a few high-level people with high-level monsters. That's really good. Um, I think we're going to... I'm actually going to move him there, I think. So Eliza now has... Does she have any spells, actually? Yes, she has flame. Beautiful. So she can actually be a backliner until she needs to move to the front line. And that is a very strong team. Cool. We need... Eh... That, that should be plenty. Here we have some front line mixed with some back line. Healer mixed with... Some pretty good front line too. Dragons. Lots of dragons. Cyclops. <laughs> That's right. So the Gigas can upgrade into a Cyclops. So he gets stronger by poking one of his eyes out. Sometimes there's just interesting things like that, but it's fine. We got another rock here. We have a lot of frontline actually, very little support here. Which means. Ooh, Okay. Another thing is whenever you're controlling it, if you're off a little bit from the territory you're trying to click on, the menu pops up instead of actually letting you click on the uh, on the territory. So that's an interesting design decision. We have Gigas Elemental. Okay, so we've got a little bit of support. Pretty low level person there. I think we need to move somebody like... Also, I'm curious if moving particular people together, like these two, the elfie people, I kind of want to keep them together. Is there not a way to select multiple? So, that's... Huh. Alright, so it looks like you have to move each one individually. Neat. Um, okay, looking at this as a risk map, we have this ca uh, this territory that can only be attacked from here. This territory that can only be attacked, or can be attacked from either of those two. And this territory that can be attacked by those two. So we only really have three territories to defend. Okay, and you also are going to move over here. And then... Liza, I think we're gonna... pick a fight with the... Actually, I think we're going to pick a fight with both the Shinobi Tribe and Norzalio at the same time. Because I think that'll be fun. If you're going to start a war, you might as well start a war on two fronts. And I'm going to move him over here. Okay. And then here... We've got those two. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm going to move somebody from here. Uh, bishop sounds good. Move the bishop down to here. And instead of moving the two elfy people over there. I don't know what the race is called yet, so I'm just going to refer to them as elfy people until I know what I should be calling them. Alright, so... 
I kind of like that they've added... So, Legend of Force, you know, whenever you had your troops moving, there was no real indicator other than just opening the territory and looking at where the name of the place you were moving them to was. Uh, you can move troops to any territory that is directly linked to any other territory that they're in. So, if you get cut off and isolated, then you're not able to move freely between the territories. The arrows are a little too distracting, though. So I know I've got people moving... Cornwin... Cornwern and Angela. Cornwern and Angela. And it's also worth noting that each territory has different monsters it can summon. So, here we have Element Mandrake's Giant Snake. Here we have Imp. Gar uh, Golem Rock. So we should actually pick up some healers if we can. Beautiful. Um, okay. Summon one. Summon another. Uh, does it have mouse and keyboard support? Actually, let's find out. Let's find out. This actually might be better now that I think about it. Because, yeah, that's, that's very floaty on the world map. And let's just summon one more unicorn just for good measure. Okay, so mouse and keyboard appear to be working. Let's see. Uh, troops. Okay. It is a port from a console game, so it doesn't really surprise me that you do have to go through the menus as if you were using a controller. But now, we can put... Actually, am I going to have the mana to summon two more? Okay, so right click lets you go back. That's cool. And I have enough to summon one more. That's fine. So, yeah, you can use mouse and keyboard. And actually, that might actually just be better. Alright, so WASD skips between the different territories. Is it arrow keys? Yeah, arrow keys moves the cursor as if you were moving your controller. That's interesting. Alright. That's cool. So, right. We summon some more unicorns. We need to... No, not move. Troops. We need to figure out who we put the unicorns on. Do we have a healer here? Oh, mouse scroll will work. Cool. Uh, how do I... Oh boy. T-O toggle display. U stats. Alright. Okay, so this is an offensive class. Knights... Wizard. Okay, so we have no healers amongst these people. Um, yeah, I think I'll put the unicorn there. So we've got some healers now. Yeah, healing is very strong, so... I'm gonna do that for a minute. Again, I'm just gonna kind of wing it. And we should find success unless they actually improved the AI. And I'm actually gonna go back to controller, because even though mouse works... It just... I feel like I need to dance across the keyboard a lot more. Alright. And that is all the moves. That's all the mana I have to spend. Why does it say one... Okay. That's interesting. This says knights one, monsters two. But there's two knights and five monsters, so... Why is this bishop not showing up there? Anywhere else? 2-5? Two 2-5, five. Two five, that's correct. Huh. And here it's showing zeros. Ah, move 5, move 1. Okay, so it shows how many are going to be left. Cool. Alright, and now we can open the menu. Hit end phase. Although first, actually, let me just look real quick. Settings, camera, 
No. Trolls? No. Other? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to get rid of the bit of float there is when you're moving around. No. That's fine. So we'll end phase. So that's the organized phase. I think I covered all the important stuff. And now we have the attack phase. So anytime you move, you can't actually attack with the people you just moved. So if we wanted to attack for this territory, we could not use either of the knights that we just moved here. But that's fine. Um, here, though, we actually have two knights we can attack with. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. Although I really wish... It's, it's such a small thing. It really is, but it really makes a huge difference. Because you can... In Legend of Forsena, back in 1998, you could use the square key to toggle multiple people. So you could order them to attack all at the same time. Instead of having to do it one at a time. And I think we're going to check these guys out. So these are our enemies. Um, why is Bugbear tell me the best offense is the incredibly aggressive defense? Okay. Um, don't know what you're talking about, dude, but alright. So we have Talia, which is their leader. We have seven monsters, Sid Swordsman, and Toby a Bazoo Knight. Okay. So they have Wolfman. Neat. Um, and then if we go up here, they have a lot more monsters. But they do appear to be mildly threatening at best. I think I'm going to use elements to decide. Let me, let me look. Okay. So he is white elemental, she's green, and those are the only two I can attack with right now. And she is white, he is white, he is white. And over here we've got green, white, green, green. Okay, element, we don't have any advantage. Oh, outlast them, yeah, that's the plan. Heals OP, man. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and attack that way. So my goal is not actually to win this battle. Uh, I'm actually just going to attack to A, show how the battle works. B, uh, show just some tactical considerations. And C, just kind of get some experience and test their resolve, basically. <laughs> uh, down here we have three knights. Yeah, we moved one. Three knights there. Also, the combat power, I don't know how it's calculated, but it's just an approximation of the strength of each force. It includes, I think, the three strongest knights at a location, so even though this says we have a combat power of 14,000 versus a combat power of 10,000, that's, I think, if we just were using the three strongest knights. So we're actually very much weaker than them while we attack. And all of our combat powers are over 9,000. Beautiful. It just seems kind of excessive whenever... <laughs> whenever the, the numbers are so big and they mean so little. But yeah, so we end phase to begin all of the evasions. So, every territory chooses their attacks simultaneously. And then they all get executed one after another after another. Which... I always thought it was pretty cool. Uh, there's actually a variation to Risk that does the same thing, where you all choose your attacks privately at the same time, and then just see who attacks who. So of course we're going to deploy both the knights. And the glorious hex grid begins. Okay, so it, this is an example. We seem to have dropped some people that have dialogue, so at the start of battles this can randomly happen depending on who you're dropping and who you're against. So, I come in the name of the Uzala family. We won't hold back. You will know just how strong the Shinobi tribe can be. And that's it. Nice tiny little story beat. Just a, just a morsel. 
of story there. All right, uh, we have a Bard, an Elemental, and a Gigas on that team. You can see on the right-hand side the initiative order. So this gentleman, which I really wish it actually showed his name. Um, comrade, it does, okay. And this is Zanula. Nice. But the different uh, heroes move, I believe, in order of level, unless that's changed. Uh, so the higher level knights act first, and the lower level knights act later. Each, uh, each monster, each unit has its own move range. This golem cannot actually move. I should have put the unicorn somewhere else. Alright. One step. And you'll also notice the, the area of effect around the knights, the heroes, is the amount of area that your monsters can be in without getting penalties, because if they're beyond that range, then they actually are less effective because they're not within your direct control or something. I've never really been a fan of it because I like, if anyone's familiar with my rogue tech videos, I really like things like flanking maneuvers. So being forced to stay within two or three hexes of the leader has always been a little less than ideal for me, just for my particular style of play. And Valkus. Uh, yeah, then, no, no, uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't talking about the, the damage in the game and the hit points and things. I, I was talking about specifically the arbitrary combat power. Like, it's, it's an arbitrary, from what I understand, from what I can tell, it's an arbitrary number that generalizes and approximates the strength of your forces. There's no reason for it to be over 9,000 on every single base. That, that kind of scaling, like, the, so the smaller the numbers you're working with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just talk while I move these people, uh, the smaller the numbers you're working with, the more impactful each increment is, but the bigger the number you're working with, the less impactful each increment is. So if you're working with something that's just an approximation, you don't really need to have a bunch of fine-tuned control over it. And I'm not saying that it should be like a 1 through 10, that that would be too narrow, uh, because as Valkos pointed out, it is also determining who attacks where, um, which is a point we'll get back to in a, in a bit. But the, the combat power, a scale of 0 to 100 would have been perfectly adequate. Like, there, there is no reason it couldn't have just been from 0 to 100 based on your strength. Also, these guys are mountain type. Well, that's not going to help us, so you can just be in the road. Uh, this is B. We have our bard. Elemental. Okay, so this is just going to jump right here. Bard is ranged, correct? Okay, buff and basic attack. Ah, she's a support unit. Got it. Um, yeah, we wouldn't have the Dragon Ball reference. <laughs> Very true. But the the idea, whenever you're choosing what kind of scale to use for a game, it's, you, you have to consider what the purpose is. So, in games like, uh, for example, Warhammer, the, the tabletop game, as, as Yuln mentioned, in Warhammer, you're using d6s. You're using six-sided dice. So the way that they give more granularity between outcomes is they make you roll 20 six-sided dice for a single unit. So even though they're only using one through six as variables, they're using a large volume of those one through sixes, so it actually gives the granularity that using larger numbers would. But makes it more understandable to use with dice. And this golem will eventually get there. But yeah, so very large numbers are... And I'm just kind of ignoring them because all my units are full health, right? Well, 
I say that. <laughs> okay, apparently our Gigas is paralyzed. Our elemental is dead. <laughs> this is great. So this is actually going to go over one of the points I was going to make during this battle. Um, but first, I, I do want to finish my thought on the granularity of numbers. So, it's important to pick the, the Goldilocks zone whenever you're working with variables in a game. Because if you have just insanely high numbers, uh, a, a good example is Disgaea, uh, the, the series of JRPGs called Disgaea. They, I think intentionally and somewhat facetiously, used insanely huge numbers. Um, so, anyone familiar with Final Fantasy, generally the cap, the, the largest number you can get for hit points and damage is a number of nines based on how many bits that era of Final Fantasy used. Because the larger the number, the more bits it takes to differentiate between the numbers. So 8-bit games weren't able to use as big of numbers as 16, 32, etc. bit games. The choice that they used that they made of stopping it, for example, uh, in Final Fantasy VIII, you can only get 9,999 damage per attack. But I believe you can get 99,999 hit points because they decided that they were going to stop it at nines. Even though technically with the same number of bits they could have gone higher because it's a it's a factor of two, I believe. The, the number of digits you can get and the, the value of the bits. So as you get to larger numbers, uh, the the difference between the bit increase changes. But the, the reason they capped it in Final Fantasy at 9999 or 99999, etc cetera, etc, cetera, is just so that the the player can more easily go, okay, I am at the maximum value. Because if the maximum value was, you know, 102,365, that would just seem odd if you're staring. Uh, <laughs> we'll lurk while I do house stuff. Thank you, Taro. Um, but yeah, the, the general concept of just putting it at an even number is one consideration. But the granularity makes a big difference. So just to finish the point... TLDR, my, my end of tangent, is the smaller the numbers you're working with in a set, the more impactful each change is. And the, the reverse is also true. So it's just interesting that they chose for such a like low impact number to have such large values where the increment doesn't really matter that much. Like having a hundred more combat power isn't going to make much more of a difference than having, you know, ten more. All that matters is that you're one higher than the opponent to attack first. So, back to the actual, <laughs> back to the actual game, rant concluded. Let's see how much experience we can get and how few monsters we can lose. So it's unfortunate that the elemental died instantly to Sid's first attack. Ah, critical rate up. Hit point recovery. 120 power, 170 power. Okay, he is... He's beefy. 129 attack, 600 hit points. Okay, both of them are beefy, actually. But we're just here for experience. So, the options here... Move, skill, magic, retreat. And standby. Standby is you just end your turn without doing anything. Retreat is only available to the commanders, to the rune knights, and they let you evacuate the battle and keep all the monsters that are still alive, alive. But if you take lethal damage with a rune knight, you automatically retreat, are wounded, and there's a chance your monsters will be left behind for the enemy to capture. And the same goes for if you're just, you know, if you're eliminating the enemy rune knights. So you can actually get some really powerful monsters by just taking down a rune knight and winning the battle. You do have to win the battle to keep the monster that you captured, though. Um, I think we're going to go protect on our knight here. 
just to reduce the physical damage he's taking. I would have absolutely cured uh, if I could have. But our unicorn does have cure. Oops. So, even though... Even though it's not his turn anymore, so he's not going to get an attack this round, he will still get counterattacks. And because of that, I'm also going to use Protect on him as well. So now, as they hit him, he'll be able to counterattack and get experience every time he counterattacks. Unfortunately, this golem... This golem can only move adjacent to these two rune knights. And so I'm actually just going to move and stand by to allow him to soak damage and prevent them from getting to my backline as easily. And here we are. This is what we're here for. Actually, yeah, I'll heal. Cool. There we go. 212 heal from a knight. Pretty good. And yes, the the damage output those crits. <laughs> so now that she's paralyzed, well, okay, now she's out completely, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. And they didn't capture my Gigas, so that's fine. But the fact that she was paralyzed meant that I would not be able to actually retreat with her once it was her turn. For the record, this was a terrible idea. I knew it was a terrible idea going in, and I'm likely going to have very little experience as a result from this, but I just wanted to get into a relatively low impact battle to go over some of the tutorialization stuff. Silent, sure. Actually, I should have looked at the chance to hit instead of just throwing it at whoever. But yeah, so there we go. We got a level on our imp. Um, if I stick around, they're just going to kill him. So I'm going to move in here. Take a swing at whoever I can. Yeah, I'm going to go with 100% accuracy there. Get some experience on the golem. And then call it a day and retreat. Yep. So that's the battles in a nutshell. And then you also sometimes get story beats whenever you retreat or get defeated. Oh, can't silence tell you because she has a brigandine. Cool. Good to know, thank you, Velkos. Um Yeah, so defeat, that's fine. They actually are going to get, I think it's 300 experience per unit for winning the fight. But again, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate in a very low impact battle. And then here's the conclusion screen, which is a wonderful thing to just take a quick glance and see, okay, one of my knights was wounded, I lost an elemental, and they lost nothing. But at the very least, I now have a lot more respect for those particular heroes. Like, Sid, he... he wrecked me. And then, yeah, this is another story beat. So these are going to be interspersed throughout the entire game, which is part of the reason why the exposition makes... Like, the exposition dump at the beginning is just so incredibly long. <sighs> okay, Sugar, actually I did not see her anywhere in my, in my territory, so we, we are most likely getting her as a knight now. And this is her introduction story. Ah, okay, so she's Mua's granddaughter. Got it. But yeah. Oh, right, right. They go through a summary of every or every nation. So this is one mistake I think they made here. That they didn't make in Forsena. In Legend of Forsena, they basically just start off with, um, Oh, hey, this guy betrayed the king and killed him. There was a coup. The prince ran away. Begin war. Whereas, this is literally giving, for every playthrough, in every nation, it gives a 
general synopsis of, and the nation you're playing's opinion of, every other nation. And again, this is after one round. That's it. Just, just one round, and they decide to give us another exposition dump. Alright, Ken, thank you for joining us, and I maybe stop by later if you can, but I'll be playing this for, actually, the next uh, six and a half hours, I think, math. Yeah, six and a half hours or so. So, feel free to stop by, we'll continue this marathon later in the day and tomorrow, etc., until I beat this uh, particular playthrough. Yeah, no problem, Indibil. Okay. So, Shinobi are mercenaries, and they're trying to establish themselves as a legitimate nation of their own. Cool. Alright. Okay. I mean, it would be, it would be so much more effective if this was more interspersed, like, the, the giving your impressions, the impressions of your nations, you know, gi giving your nations impressions of the other nations should really happen over the course of fighting them. Like, all these opinions about Talia and her shinobi tribe could just happen while you fight against, because you're guaranteed to fight multiple battles against each nation. And if you don't, if you... If you don't fight a single battle against a nation before it gets eliminated, then your particular nation's opinion of that nation shouldn't be relevant to your playthrough. Which also adds replayability because then you're seeing more information, you're seeing more exposition, more story in for future playthroughs of the same nation, because, oh, this time, I actually fought against this nation six times instead of just twice. So now I have a deeper understanding of the, my nation's, you know, opinions of that nation. It just... The exposition dump. It's such a problem, but it's a problem in, like, every field of storytelling. I've seen books do it, I've seen movies do it, I've definitely seen games do it. I've seen DMs in Dungeons and Dragons or, you know, Shadowrun do a big exposition dump at the start of a campaign. And it's... It's like instruction manuals. That's, that's the best way I could think of, like... It's an instruction manual for the story. If it's too long and too detailed, then it all just kind of blends together, and it's not nearly as effective as if it's, like, bullet points laid out well and, you know, it expanded on as needed. Like, I've, I've never seen an instruction manual that indicates that you should lay out the different size screws in different piles. They just assume you're gonna keep track of it on your own at some point get to, oh, you need this size screw now. So they don't care. You know, the, the people who write the instructions don't care about how you have, you know, kept track of things yourself. They just give you information, and a lot of people don't even read instruction manuals, even if they are short. But if they're too long and verbose, nobody pays attention. And I'm sure this is all very interesting, but at the same time, there's so much of it, it's all just kind of drawing a blank now. So, this is the third nation, or fourth nation that they're going over. I stopped caring on the second nation, and I started just skipping the text to get on with it. I am still, again, leaving it up so that I can look back later, or anyone who's watching the VOD can pause and read everything they're saying. But it's just... 
There's so much. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> like, this should absolutely be an optional thing. Like, it's, it's cool that they're giving you the opinions and stances, but I would much prefer this to be a tab you could choose, whether it be in-game or from the main menu, where you just select, hey, I want to know intel about the other nations. Because I, this is like going over the characters in this nation's opinions of the motivations of the other nations and the people in the other nations. It's... It's, it's like whenever somebody is trying to take their story too seriously. And it doesn't matter how epic and powerful their story is. If they just shove it down your throat, you're not going to enjoy it. So, going to jump on the PC. <laughs> Alright, appreciate the lurk, Valkos. Enjoy. It's just... <laughs> Like, okay, now we're talking about, now they're talking about our nation, and because we've gone through five other full nations with their motivations and this nation's opinions of the other five nations, we are now at the point where this is a story about the nation I'm playing as, and I couldn't care less because I just want to get back to the game. And I, I feel like, yes, I'll come back at a later occasion and probably enjoy all the little details and nuggets in the story beats. But this is not the time. <laughs> all that happened, and the only thing I care about at this point after all of that is that I got another knight. Cool. It would have been great if there was a tab here where you just open it up and it's like... Intel or something. And it could be even further expanded on by having intel and then choosing a particular territory and having the characters in your nation discuss the knights and nation of that specific territory. That would actually be really cool. So then you can get the fluff when you want it. Fluff on demand is always the way to do it. It's, it's one of my convictions that I hold in storytelling is like, if you want to have really deep, intense, and amazing storylines, present the basic story to everyone, but give everyone the option to, to buy into more. To go, I want to go down that rabbit hole. That being said, they did give me the entire time, they did give me the option to just skip it. Which I appreciate, because... There are some games out there, not going to name any names, but there are some games out there that force you to watch the entirety of the exposition with no option to skip it. Which is just so, so rough. And yeah, you see Patricia the Bard is wounded, so she is unable to participate in a battle and she's also unable to move during the organized phase because she's wounded. But that's completely fine. Uh, we now have our level 20 uh, leader, as well as some other pretty high levels. Uh, Sugar here comes with a demon, an imp, and a unicorn. That's pretty nice. Enchantress. Okay. I think I'm going to run Eliza just with Mua and Sugar. So that she's supported by two casters, lots of rune power. That's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And we have a lot of fire elemental, so we should be pretty strong against the shinobi tribe. Yeah, I think I'll probably summon some more monsters for the other three that I'm going to leave on defense. And at this particular location, we can summon dragons, lizardmen, and 
high dog? Wait, 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 wait. They legitimately called a monster a high dog? Um... Oh, you mean for my game? Um, I have not decided... So, with my project that I've been working on, I have been focused... I, I have the overarching storyline that I would love to pursue with the different nations and the different motivations and things and stuff. But I feel like the most important part of any game is the actual user experience and obviously the the mechanisms that are part of the gameplay. Because without solid gameplay, it doesn't matter how good your story is. If nobody enjoys playing your game, they're not going to buy into the story. They're not going to give it any any emotional in depth at all. Like, investment, that's the word I was thinking. They're not going to give any emotional investment to a storyline for a game that feels bad to play. So, up to this point, I've been entirely focused on getting the mechanisms of the game, the user interface, the functionality, and everything working well, and I'm working on getting it looking good now. The story, the story mode, is going to be not secondary in priority, but secondary in completion. I'm going to have a fully operational, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have a fully operational game system that you can play as just a standalone, I want to jump in and play a strategy game. I don't feel like dealing with fluff right now, so I'm going to play the non-story mode and just play the video game. But then if you want, this is this is exactly what I was talking about, like, I'm giving the players the option to buy into story mode. So, that way, if you click, I want to play story mode, you're saying, hey, I've set aside some time to really dig into the lore of your world. And only at that point in my game will there be any exposition at all. If you just want to jump in and play the strategy game, you will have the option of just jumping in, picking a picking a nation for that particular map, and playing the game. I'll probably still include little story beats in the uh, skirmish mode, or whatever I end up calling it, but the, the majority of the fluff will be locked behind a button at the very beginning that you say, I want the story. But as far as the individual story beats, I don't know if I'm going to give lore on items. I don't know if I'm going to give lore on monsters. Like, I do like the idea of the... what was it? No, it wasn't summon, it was troops. The, the fact that you can go to, for example, the Flame Dragon and read an entire paragraph about Flame Dragons. You're buying in. If you go to that profile tab, you are saying to the game, I want fluff. Give me fluff. And so they give you fluff. This is amazing. Same with uh, in Dark Souls, or any Souls-like, the item descriptions having fluff. You're buying in. You're saying to the game, okay, this is gameplay, this is gameplay. If all I care about is gameplay, I'm going to stay on these two tabs. But the second I go to this tab, I'm buying in. I'm saying, give me fluff. Here's my time that I want to invest. Give me fluff. So, that's part of the reason why Dark Souls is very fondly spoken about by people who both love the fluff and don't care about the fluff. Because it doesn't... Like, other than an opening cutscene, Dark Souls never forces you to pay attention to fluff. And... Indibil, yeah, info dumps on demand. Absolutely. If if it's not optional, <laughs> it's just going to be less impactful. It's going to be less effective. Because the second that a player says, I want to buy into the fluff, they already care enough to buy into it in the first place. Which, psychologically speaking, actually means they will be more receptive to it and look at it more positively even if it's not as good. 
Like, even if it's heavy-handed, if you're giving them the option to just buy into it, they will come in more invested than if you just slap them in the face with it until they die. So, I think we're going to jump back to the gameplay real quick, because I have tangented for quite a while now. Uh, I think we need to put a healer on Marcosius' team. He has exactly 64 room power left, and a healer is 40. So... Ah, right, we can't summon healers here. Alright. That's fine. We'll move him to a place where we can next round. Is there anything else we need? We have actually quite a bit of space left on Kane. Um... Also, he has a level 8 dragon. Cool. I think Conrad, I think, is going to get another big frontline unit. So, dragon? Absolutely. And he was not a Mana Miracle. I don't care, though. It's fine. Uh, you saw, actually, I should have... I'll, I'll summon another monster and draw actual attention to it. This is him. Knight, Conrad. Yep. Beautiful. Yay, Obsessive Propulsions. And then I also want to put something else in front of the Bard. So... I have 1150 mana reserves. That's, that goes back to the granularity thing that I was on about earlier. Um, Brigandine has always had an issue of mana being either, you know, overflowing or insignificant. Like, if you're not getting enough mana per round to actually replenish your losses, it's just a slow spiral to death. But by the same token, if you just have never-ending mana, then you don't really care about whether or not it's a thing. So, that being done, and yes, I put the extra dragon on Patricia even though she's wounded, because even though she won't be able to defend this round, there's... Uh, I guess actually, okay, it would make more sense. It makes more sense to put the dragon that I just summoned on Kane, so that if we get attacked, Kane can be part of the defense force. But that, that castle is ready to go. This castle is facing down Alternia here. And we can actually look at what, mm, what monsters Alternia has. And we see some white elements. And that's it, just white elemental. So actually, if we could summon something like a demon here, we cannot. But if we were able to summon a black elemental monster, to be able to do specifically ranged or spellcaster monster to do extra damage would be nice. Um, but we also know they don't have anything that's strong against green or blue, so we can just kind of summon whatever. Except we actually have very little... We have very little in the way of rune power to work with. But I think we can actually fit something else. Let's grab uh, another Mandrake. They do have the ranged attack, they can paralyze. So, that's good. Ah, I was gonna... <laughs> okay. Let me summon something else so I can go on about the summon screen. There we go. Alright. Summoning here. Okay, cool. So they actually show the rune or the combat power in red whenever we have less. Uh, let's see, out of curiosity, do you think there's any merit to adding a madness valor mechanic to these games, as shown in games like Aratus and Darkest Dungeon, or does that just muddy the waters? Actually, it's funny you ask. There's uh, so I use a third resource, so. Actually, you know what? I'll get back to that 
that's an entire tangent I will go down during the next battle. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my point here real quick and summon. Uh, actually, I should see we have 63, 44, and 53 left. We have healers. We need a little bit more front line. Yeah, we can make a we can make a rock fit. So here we go. I'm not gonna hit anything yet. We get the animation. After the animation, it shows this. So what this is showing us is what, like, the the strengths of this particular rock. So this rock has less hit points than other rocks, but more mana, strength, intelligence, and agility. So it's a pretty good one. If all of the numbers were red, it would indicate that it was a pretty bad one. And then you see a full summary where it gives the skills, the abilities, everything. But the key thing is that every single monster you summon has a randomly designated series of growths. And this one, this rock is particularly bad with hit points. But other than that, it's pretty solid. And the Manic Miracle that we got, the, the first rock that we summoned, had just everything maxed out. So... Yeah, there's, a, there's that indicator that, oh hey, you have a really good monster there. This, this Mana Miracle, really good. Pretty happy to have it. It will probably come in very handy. Alright, so that's all the summoning we need to do. We've already moved into position. So we end phase. We see if there's a story beat before the attack phase. Indeed, there is not. And let's just go... Full-blown attack. Okay, we can select all troops. That's that's fine. But in a situation like this... <clears throat> excuse me. In a situation like this, we don't want to send all troops. We just want to send the three. Which is Eliza. So we have to select it like that. Mua. Like that and sugar, like that. Okay. And then we're gonna not attack with the other three, because I I would like to attack with the uh, knight that's wounded. And we'll, we'll go over the questing next, uh, next organized phase. And then finally, here, even though we only have three knights, if we attack, one or the other. If if we are attacked by the other one, actually if we're attacked by either, uh, we will actually be forced to defend. But if we attack and we are not attacked ourselves, we will fight the battle and then next round during the organized phase we can actually move back. So there's no reason to not attack here other than, you know, the risk of losing troops. Um, I am going to, I think, attack, uh, Manislesia here, actually. Sure. Why not? And then we're gonna hit end phase, and begin a bunch of invasions. So, now then. This is gonna be an epic battle between some of our strongest and some of their strongest, and a whole bunch of monsters. <clears throat> oh, let me drink some coffee real quick. Alright, so we're gonna drop Eliza, Mua, and Sugar. I don't know why that defaults to no instead of yes, but that's fine. Uh, so, on the topic of the hit points, mana points, and some, some you know, uh, games using things like morale or uh, sanity for Darkest Dungeon, things like that. Um, ah. They're being friendly with each other. No need for conflict between us. Join us so we can fight together. 
How do wars start? They start with every nation considering what is best for its people and striving to achieve that perfect dream, isn't that right? We shinobi are no different. You would have us choose to fight alongside the immoral and give up our dreams to do so? We reject such an irrational choice and we choose to fight for our freedom. For our freedom! Okay. Alright. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like that was supposed to be a very, like, heartfelt story beat. And, like... Oh, look, they're not wanting to fight each other, but... Oh, they're... they're forced to because they have slightly differing opinions. I don't know. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm just burnt out because I'm I'm generally not much of a fluff person, real really. Like I enjoy it on, I enjoy it on occasion, but like I I prefer gameplay over fluff unless I'm like in the mood for it. Like when I'm DMing uh, a D&D &D campaign, I'm totally in it for the fluff. The fluff is great. The, the fluff is the primary point of the experience, in my opinion. But when I'm playing a video game, especially a turn-based tactical or strategy game, story is just... It's something that I, I opt into sometimes. But if there's too much of it, I just start numbing to it, and then I just don't want to deal with it at all. But, uh, yeah, again, the, the locking it behind, behind things. Just, like, Rogue Tech, or Battletech, uh, Hairbrain Schemes Battletech, the, the game that the modded version I cover on my channel majority of the time. Yeah, I really like how they... Uh, in both the base game and in Rogue Tech, how they do the story. So, in in Rogue Tech, all story is done via flashpoints and mission descriptions. And that's it. Um, which is great for the roguelike experience. Then we have the base game, which also does a great job. Uh, and it it is a full story campaign, but it's it's got small beats and gameplay in between. The introductory like mission tells you the backstory over the course of the entire mission. It's very well executed. Um, we also need to go back to the tangent that I keep getting distracted from the hit points. Mana being the standard stock RPG resources. And then some games adding to that with things like uh, sanity or morale. And that's a really... It's a powerful but dangerous concept. Because it does make things slightly more unfamiliar to players. Who are not used to that particular, you know, thing, that, that resource being a thing. But it does have this extra um, ability to add depth to the game. And it, it really comes down to the complexity versus depth concept. So anytime you add a new system to a game, or any kind of tweak to a formula that you're using, you have to consider that you're adding some complexity to the game. Even if it's a minimal complexity, you are adding complexity to the game. So, by doing that, you end up putting yourself in a situation where you have to make sure that that depth, I mean, that complexity is adding depth and not just complexity for complexity's sake. I think I'm actually gonna drop these guys over here, push him forward a little, Get the unicorn there. Uh, let's see, who do, who do we want to front line with? We definitely want this dragon, level 10 dragon, up in the front line. He'll be able to move here or here. 
Okay. Alright. So we're going to move him here. He's going to shift over to this side. She will move here. And we've got Dragon. Again, healer. Uh, rock. Give a little bit of defense to our commander. Try to get the lizard man in position. But yeah, the 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 addition of an additional resource type. I can I find it very compelling if done well. Um, so for my game, I've added a additional resource, and right now tentatively it's called morale. But in order to understand the reason I added it, it's important to pay attention to the way Brigandine here is working. So, everyone's moving forward and attacking. If I have a monster reach zero health, it dies and is removed from my forces. However, if it survives with one hit point at the end of the battle, it will heal to full. And up until it takes that last hit point worth of damage, it's going to be as effective, as powerful, until the very end. No, not silent. Protect. Oh, protect is only three hexes, huh? I see. Oops. Alright. Yeah, he'll be able to hit our commander there. Cool. And she... I mean, I can be super reckless here and just go for a melee attack. That's a terrible idea, though. But it's also not a really great place to position her. Eh, whatever. So it was... Oh, jeez. Did I, did I make my point clearly? I think I just was rambling for a minute. My mistake. Um, okay, so we can hit... I will get back to the tangent in a moment. I'm just trying to see how much damage this is going to do. I mean, that's pretty significant damage across the board, but I think... We're able to do insane damage to one of their commanders. And we absolutely will. Alright, 345. Beautiful. Hunter shots. We have a zero percent. Excuse me. Zero percent chance to hit. Say what now? Uh. Okay. So that should never be a thing. There should never be an absolute 0% chance to hit. I mean, yes, evade tanking is a thing. But if you're ever at a point where you just are guaranteed to miss, that's no longer evade tanking. Or, I'm sorry, it's no longer healthy for the game. That's just flat-out tanking. Classic Toby evasion. Okay, so this is actually a thing. Got it. Okay, so because of that, I'm no longer confident that Eliza will be able to kill him. But we do have Frost here. Even though it's a weak element. Okay, how much... If I move... I can't move over the mountain. I see. See, um, okay, can I move him out of the way then? Not really. All right, I will anyway. Just so I can move in here. And wait, fling. 
Really? I see. So the elements like she has a melee attack. That's interesting. All right. Um, yes. So if your hit points don't hit zero, actually, I have this dragon here. Yeah, he's dead. One hundred percent is he dead. Thirty-two percent. What about Crimson Terror here? Twenty-eight percent. Magic. 100% chance to do 165. Flame Breath. That, that'll do. That'll do nicely. So, the way that the game works here is there's no reason to not burn all of your mana every single battle without fail. As compared to the system that I've developed where the more damage you take, the lower your morale gets in my game. Uh, and the lower the morale of a character gets, the less effective they become in a fight. It's not crippling. It's not like, oh, you hit zero morale, you die. Or go insane and start destroying your own team, like Darkest Dungeon. Um, but it is... Right, magic, flame, goodbye. Um, it is... It is important to have that differentiation between, like, okay, you've hit zero hit points, versus, okay, you've been attacked three times. You're injured, but you're not killed. And to add to the, the War of Attrition feeling, we just got a Pegasus. Cool. Nice. Um... But yeah, to, to add to the War of Attrition feel, unlike in Brigandine here, where at the end of the battle round, at the end of the attack round, all of your characters get their magic points fully restored, their mana fully restored, as well as getting their health fully restored. Uh, yeah, the, the system I use has more of a kind of percentage restoration. And actually, I'm going to pull back with this centaur. Because he got smacked pretty good. I'm going to send the High Lizardman forward. 52%. I'm just going to tank. And before I heal, I'm going to try... 58%. Why do these guys have such high evasion? It's crazy. I mean, I'm still going to take it. Nice hit. Ow. Nice crit. Good job. That hurt. <laughs> but now I'm going to heal, so it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, stats talking, ooh, combat. I'm, I'm going total goldfish right now, trying to multitask. Maybe I should wait for the organized phase to actually discuss stats, but, uh... Just the, the quick TLDR version is, yeah, like, the fact that you're super effective, regardless of how many times you've been smacked, as long as your hit points haven't reached zero, is problematic. It also causes status effects and buffs and debuffs to be... Wow, six health. That's not good. Wait, is that our Mana Miracle? Oh, I really hope that wasn't our Mana Miracle. <laughs> Whoops. I sent a rock into its death. That that crit counterattack was rough. Okay, Frost. Sure, that sounds good. Get ourselves a nice kill. Not with the spell, but soon. Imp. Protect. On... I mean, if we put it on Eliza, we could just be really bold. Now, if the leader of a nation gets defeated in a fight, everyone is forced to retreat. So, that's a thing. But, other than that, we should be fine. Losing a monster here and there is no big deal. 
and there's nobody we can hit with our... Oh! 18, huh? But this is the last person for this activation, so yeah, might as well. Might as well. Prep it for a kill. But yeah, so... The general idea is... Adding depth... Without adding unnecessary complexity is... Challenging. But also very rewarding. Speaking of rewarding... I'm gonna scoop this elemental forward. Ah, no. I wanna scoot it more forward than that, but that's really risky. Can I... Oop. Okay, so there should absolutely be a confirm button before standby is a thing. I was trying to go back and select this guy to see if I could move to that space before moving the elemental in. But there was no confirm button, it seems. That's very unfortunate. So now our elemental, instead of hitting for damage, that that's that's just not a thing, huh? Okay. Uh, solid inflicts petrify. Eh. I mean, we could venom. Eh. I think I actually want to reposition him. Okay, 91% to actually get a kill here. That's beautiful. We may not be able to hit their heroes, but we can smack their knight or their monsters around. Okay, so next in the turn order on the right side of the screen, we have our commander, our front line. So we should be able sixty-seven percent. Okay. Alright. We're gonna take that spot then. Hit the dragon. We're gonna move forward, and we're gonna hit the dragon. Nice. 84 damage. Not much, but it's fine. And we're out of range to heal, aren't we? Yes, we are. So we are just going to move forward. Like so. This golem is horribly out of position. Beautiful. Alright. Dragon. Dragon go bird. Then again. I can actually put the dragon right up here. 162 damage. That's respectable. That's very respectable. Alright. We could hit him with flame, but I'm actually going to save the MP. Do we have a hit chance on their hero? 87%. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm... Oh, uh, but I can't sacrifice this position. What's our hit chance here? 74%? I'll take it. But yeah, we can't leave him in our flank and, you know, push past him to close the gap up here. So we're going to leave the Wyvern able to get to our wizard. Should be fine, though. Uh, what's our lizard man's hit chance? No, not move. Skill. 52. I'll still take it. Nah, 50 50. Oh, no. It's fine. It happens. Alright, moving in. Skill, Rose Drive. Poke. Bold move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is not going to be an optimal playthrough. This is going to absolutely be a let's see what I can get away with against the quote hard mode enemy. 
She still has protect, right? Yeah, she still has protect. So I'm actually gonna heal the lizard man here. All right, level two unicorn. All right, Jose, what you gonna do? Get healed. All right, respectable. 260 damage. That's why I healed him. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you, if anyone who is watching the VOD or any of you in chat care to see, like, optimal playthrough or, like, high-level and good playthrough, uh, Valkos does, is doing a challenge run right now, um, I know that, uh, Brain, Veracity Trigger also has done some, like, higher, higher, more conceptually laid out and solid gameplay. I'm just kind of having a fun time. I, I, I know based on the way the game works and the reviews I've heard of the AI, this is not a matter of do I win, it's a matter of how long it takes to win. And putting it on hard, I do have a limited amount of time, that's a lot of damage. But who would I follow up with? No, I'm gonna hit him. So, I may run out of time and not actually complete the mission, or complete the, uh, the campaign, but that's fine. Because this is just all about seeing what I can get away with, having a good time, and hanging out with all of you. And anyone else who stops by along the way. It's largely just to give an introduction of the game. 100%? 69 damage? Sure. Smack. That also puts us in position to hit somebody next round with magic. Uh, we are out of protect. So, silence 11%, silence 52. Go ahead and get some experience. I don't even think wyverns have anything they can cast, but it's fine. Get another heal in on the wizard men. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's. As far as I'm concerned, that's the entire point of streaming. Is just to hang out with people, have a good time, get some laughs in whenever something unexpected or silly happens, get a nice hit on this dragon for 45 damage because I want to kill it. Level 2 Centaur, beautiful. Uh, yeah, moving in. Flame shot on the dragon. I don't care if it just hits the dragon. It's 84 damage. Yeah, we're taking that thing down. Golem, punch! Ah, still unable to reach. What if I use this golem? Like so. And then am I able to get the other golem in there? Yes, I am. Beautiful. Golem, punch! Alright, and you'll notice every single counterattack is doing very similar damage, despite the fact that he's down to 19 health. He has 19 hit points left, and he's still doing the same damage he's done the entire battle. That just... it always bugs me with Dragon Dean. And we're gonna go ahead and get a multi-kill here. Or do I go disrespect and go and kill it with the Unicorn? Nah, I'll make the smart move. And sorry for the sirens. I live, uh, I live right around the corner from the police substation, so that's probably going to be happening all day. All right, magic heal. Um, yeah, I think the golem's the only thing that really needs heal. Boom. So yeah, we killed one of their leveled up monsters. So even though we lost a rock, that's fine. Speaking of kills, Crimson Terror deals moderate damage to a single adjacent enemy unit, has a 50% chance of decreasing target's attack for a limited number of turns. So her special attack, her, her attack that uses MP and has less accuracy bonus, also does less damage. 152 
versus 175. What? Like, yeah, it also has a chance to debuff the target, but... What? Hunter Swing, 50-50. I think I'm actually going to instead... Ah, uh, but if I do that... Oh, yeah, that's fine. Is it? Is it fine, though? Is it fine if I move in and kill the Wyvern with the Lizard Man? Because that would leave... Sugar here exposed to him stepping forward and murdering her. Now I think I'll get some experience with the Centaur. That should be a kill, right? Nope. I misjudged. Alright. Fair enough. Unicorn! Has it... Oh, oh, okay. So her attack... The, it has an extra red tip. I see, yeah, okay. It still does, like, he's he's green elemental, and it still does 25 less damage or so. But it does have a chance of reducing his attack, which would essentially obliterate the entire enemy team here. Like, they don't have much left. Speaking of not having much left... Can I just, like, kill this guy? No, almost. But I can kill him. Alternatively... Would I be able to move back here? I really wish it would show movement hexes, including ones that your allies are standing in. Ah, I can't even move over... Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just leave him there, then. Uh, he is just gonna stand by so that he's defending. Because I'm pretty sure two hits could actually kill him. I mean, I could just... I could just go flame. Get a kill here. Move him with the dragon. Nah, I'll try her special attack. Boom! And it worked! 50-50! We got the coin flip. So, attack down was successful. And we'll just get the easy kill here. Nice. Appreciate you stopping by, Indivil. Feel free to stop by some other time during the marathon. This is going to take a little while, so I'll be here for a couple days. <laughs> Alright. Talia. Sticking around. Poisoning my dragon. Okay. That's fine. Protect. Okay. I mean, that thing's level 12. Cool. Now then, demon. Actually, yeah, I do want Sugar to get some experience if I can. Out of range of curse, but I can still Venom. That's not going to be enough, though. He'll be down to 127, but there's no way Sugar can do... Yeah, 95. But I can kill the dog. If I'm able to hit the dog with something else first. Hmm. Unfortunate. Do not have... Unless I want to go Kamikaze with the... Uh... Oh no, she can't even. I see. Alright. That settles that, then. Not much else I can do, really. Okay. Yeah, sure. All I need to do is hit him with a little something. Just a little something. Out of mana there, stand by. Out of mana there, stand by.
and absolutely I need to get a dual, mount, dual monitor set up. Leaning over to look at my phone over and over is... <laughs> Ooh. Less than ideal, I'll say. Alright, so we're gonna go up here with our elemental. Ah, wait, wait, wait. We wanna move... We wanna move him if we're gonna do that. Then again... Yeah, no, I'm gonna stay in the rune area for maximum effect. Stay at maximum range. Since I'm only gonna hit one anyway. And I'm gonna hit their... Great, their nation's leader. And we don't have enough for Geno Flame. But we do have power. Real quick, though. Can this centaur get a kill on that guy? 69% to kill. Alright. That's a miss. Unfortunate. Yeah, I guess at this point we go ahead and use our Venom to finish him off then. That's two kills on the wizard. Nice. Okay, so they have a wolfman, they have a guy with horns. Cool. And we got a unicorn. Neat. At this point, I think we're gonna punch a little gremlin. He's gonna do very little damage back. And actually, does this unicorn still have... Nope. Does not have the ability... Move forward, I would take 130 damage back. So no, we're just gonna stand by. And stand by, okay. This is gonna be brutal. This might actually even just outright kill. It does, it outright kills their little gremlin dude. It's beautiful. Duct tape your phone to the side of your monitor. No, I'm not going to duct tape my phone to anything. That's that's a terrible idea. We're actually going to move the lizard man over to get a free swing on the unicorn that we captured. So, free experience. Uh, do we have... No, we don't have any mana left here. So we're going to do the exact same thing with this unicorn on that unicorn. Just farm a little bit of experience there. And then, yeah, move in and smack this plant. And the miss, beautiful. Are we actually able to hit? 86%? Yeah, I'll take it. I will take the 86 there. Gonna retreat? No, just gonna heal. Okay. Okay. And Frost is not in range of anything, so I'm going to... I guess cast Flight on... <laughs> on what? Golem? Cool. Why not? There we go, level 3. Beautiful. Nothing there. Nothing there. But here. Curse. Nope, out of range. Venom. Sure. I... I can see they didn't really improve the uh, AI. At least not noticeably yet. Because... They're still not retreating. They have zero chance to win. I don't even think they have a chance to kill anything. And she's casting heal on herself instead of retreating. Punch. Punch. 
bunch. Yeah, we've got... Let's see. I mean, actually, are we in danger of losing if we stick around here? We only have flame charge left. Uh, no, nah, we'll hold off on that. We're not, we're not in danger of losing, but I mean, we might be in danger of losing in a one of our units. Uh, flame. That'll help. That's a dead Talia right there. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a dead Talia, it's just a matter of at what point and how much damage do we take in the meantime. 99%! Okay. I mean, that's... that's a kill. If it hits. Oh. Oh yeah, right, right, right. They added the ensnare or whatever it's called. So we get higher hit chance. That's a kill. That is so much disrespect. Rolling in with an elemental and just slapping the nation's leader for the kill. That's too funny. Yeah, encirclement, exactly. Thank you, thank you, Taro. Yeah, it's encirclement, so they lose evasion whenever they get encircled. So, what I was saying earlier uh, about Sid, I think, no, it wasn't Sid. It was, or was it Sid? The, the guy that had the 0% hit chance against him, that should never be a thing. But if you have a mechanic like the entrap or encirclement, where it reduces your evasion, it's fine to have over cap evasion so that even with reduced evasion, you still have capped evasion, uh, capped evasion. But capped evasion, like, you always need to give at least the 1% just, just on the off chance that the player's feeling really lucky. And at the end of the battle, everyone gets 300 experience for winning. And the proficiency that just popped up. Man, we're getting a lot of experience, or we're getting a lot of stats out of this. I saw a lot of green. Very nice. But yeah, so the proficiency that popped up whenever Sugar gained a level. Yeah, so we lost. It wasn't the Mana Miracle. We just lost a regular rock. We captured two Pegasus. I mean, a Pegasus and a Unicorn. Pretty good. And now we have another invasion. But I actually need to take a quick bio break. So, be right back.
Alright, and I am back. Fresh coffee. Ah, oh, good times. So. Mmm, pecan praline. Delicious coffee. So, where was I? Right, starting the combat with these three. I forget which exact territory this was, but based on the roads, I think this is the one that I'm trying to... Yeah, this, this I think is the one that I can safely retreat from, and you know, the, the point of this is just to get experience. Okay, so these two characters are talking to each other. Of course, uh, they started off talking to each other. Okay. Interesting. So are these just... So he just said that to, like, nobody in particular. So did they just add... So in Legend of Forcena, back in... Back on the PlayStation 1 title, they only ever really said stuff to other characters specifically. But I've noticed a couple of characters now have just said like one liners that were directed seemingly at nobody in particular. It's interesting. But yes, so here we go. Does this, uh. He does not have a breath. Okay. In Legend of Force and of the level 1 Devil Dogs or Hellhounds or whatever were uh, able to use a breath attack. So apparently the High Dog is literally just a dog. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Get our front line all nice and spread out. Get a healer in position to heal at least one flank. Dancer. Dancer is double movement evasion up. What is double movement? Is that move and then attack and then move? Okay, she has gravity and venom. And a bunch of melee attacks. Oh no, that's ranged. Okay. Cool. So yeah, she's a second liner then. Get her in there. Yeah, here we go. Hellhound does have a breath attack. Perfect. Kind of push him forward. Is this the Meta Miracle? No. Okay. I don't think it is. Get a healer in. Goblins, I'm pretty sure, have a ranged attack. Records show what you what characters have interactions, I think. Because they made some people have an easy time. Ah. Achievements. <laughs> Another thing I very rarely pay attention to. <laughs> and then guy with big axe, berserker, yep. Makes sense. We got ourselves a snake. It's good to see the snake moves a lot faster than the Hydra and Forcing it did. Because moving two to three hexes at a time was always so rough. Alright, so... Let's see. As we advance, what tangents do I need to finish? I think I largely concluded the tangent about resource bars. How they should have more impact than just they do something once you hit zero. I feel like I concluded that tangent. If I left anyone scratching their head, please let me know. I will definitely elucidate. Yeah, we have a lot of frontline, actually, on this team. Probably too much frontline, actually. And I'm gonna keep this flank, actually, kind of pushed forward. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to this evening where I dig through the files a little bit. 
Attack and defense down. That's not good. And poison and silence. Wow. What class is she? That was quite an attack. Or quite an ability, I should say. It wasn't actually an attack. Minstrel. Huh. Attack and defense inflicts poison and silence. That's an ability. That is an ability. You okay? Alright. And we're gonna push him up to the flank that we've pushed out. So that he can reinforce it. Although he's moving a little slow. Alright. We got enemies pushing us. No problem. They're pretty far away, actually. Hold on a second. This is a different different guy. Yeah, this is a guy from a different nation. Okay, he's just the same class. Makes sense. It For anyone that I'm sure has ever complained, <laughs> the the having multiple classes. I know Fire Emblem people really don't like it whenever the class is like the same model regardless of what the portrait looks like for the character. But it is prohibitively expensive and time consuming to actually have different models for every single individual unit. Like, even if it's just something like changing their hairstyle, it takes a lot of work. And most of the time, you're not going to really pay much attention to it. Okay, so he has Divine Break as his special attack. Takes no MP, but has a minus 22 accuracy. Which only drops us down to an 89%, actually. Also, interesting that he can still use his special attacks while silenced. Cool. I mean, that is potentially 179 damage. Compared to just 121 guaranteed. Yeah. Let's see if RNG Jesus has it. Nice. Alright. Even with the defense down, he only took 97 damage. So yeah, high dogs are pretty weak then. I actually could have encased him to actually make sure that it worked. I mean, yeah, this could be killed. Not with him, but he is now primed for death. Actually, he is so primed for death. I'm gonna be greedy. Get a punch in on the golem. 106 damage, it's fine. We're gonna free up this slot. Unicorn kill. That's always so fun, using your healer to get a kill. And we're gonna come in here. And yeah, that's absolutely worth it. And a crit to boot, nice. Something people eventually mod in themselves. Oh yeah, the character model. Yeah. Um, because... Oh, I can move after I attack the high dog. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, as a developer, like, it's... It's one of those things where you just have to kind of prioritize what you're going to spend your resources on. And I'm actually going to... Move around and hit her. Specifically. And this should. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, this should be a kill. It indeed is not. Mistakes were made. Poison slash. Critical hit. Beautiful. And he's poisoned. Cool. Alright. So now we move our doggo, get in position to breathe fire on her next round, in case she's still alive. Uh, yeah, just stay there. And we're actually going to move in and try to see if we can get a kill here. Yep, beautiful. 165. Nice. And she's able to move in. 
Uh, do we need to heal anyone? Actually, not not really. So we're just gonna reposition with our healer. And call that a round. Or call that a turn. But yeah, so... A lot of times, the the modding community is more willing to put in time as a hobby to do something aesthetic, whereas most players aren't going to... Oh, wow. All right. Okay, so I... <laughs> I thought the Giguses were uh, tankier than that. He just took so much damage. Yeah, that's a kill. Absolutely. I deserve that. I absolutely deserve that. I overestimated their tankiness because I saw how big and muscular they were. <laughs> yeah, so... I know I know some things, like, uh, for example, the, the biggest complaint I see with Fire Emblem specifically is that the character portraits will look a lot like the characters, you know, like a lot like the character models with just like different color hair and stuff. So it bugs people that they didn't take the time to just recolor the hair. And something like that is actually fairly quick to do. It still takes quite a bit of oh boy. Yeah, he charged up for that. I knew that was gonna hurt. <laughs> Alright, um but it's it's fairly quick to just like tweak the color of something. But the the idea of going in and changing the model completely to match a character, it takes a lot. Like, the, the future devlogs I'm going to be doing with the 3D modeling of, for my game, it, it'll be anyone who wants to watch and see how incredibly slow it can be to get something done. I think golems are actually immune to paralysis. Yeah, inorganic body prevents, yeah, okay. So we can't paralyze him. Right? That was... I actually didn't read all the way... Yeah, poison. Or paralysis. Yeah, paralysis. Jeez. So I think we're actually best off just... We can get our knight in. And kill her with him, I think. I think I'll be able to get the kill there. Mandrake is not able to move anywhere. Um, but yeah, modeling modeling takes a lot of time. I would be moving myself into a spot where I would be surrounded. Not not a great idea. Um, heavy impact. I kind of expected heavy impact to do more than that. It's only like 20 extra damage. Ah, but they can't counter-attack. I see. Boom. Wait, who got the attack and defense down? Okay, the golem did. Yeah, alright. So here I can kill or bite her. Alright. She gets a counter-attack, but then I should be able to move the high, wolf, or high dog away. Move. Move to this flank, and then we step in here, kill him, or kill her. Uh, a trigger? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the health, they, they made it so you just see the health without having to hover anyone. Minor quality of life improvement. Um, can we turn off the hit point gauge? I actually don't know, I haven't looked for it. Uh, and, okay, so, the, the modding, how, how to make games easier or harder to mod. So, there's, the, the thing to really understand about modding is that there's not just one type of modding. Uh, there's a wide variety, and some mods just change variables of a game. Some mods actually completely add well, as, as actually I think it was you that mentioned, the, the adding character models and things like that. And then there's also complete gameplay overhaul mods. So 
the different types of mods have differing kind of like price of entry or uh, or cost. For example, um, modding just variables and things like that. In Darkest Dungeon is a great example. They used a lot of JSON files for all of their data, which allowed modders to very easily go in and add new abilities, add new character classes, um, change variables, make things, you know, make things have more damage, less damage, etc., etc. Very easily because they could just open the JSON file in a text document or in a text, uh, a text program and just make the changes. Whereas uh, something like adding in a character model is a completely different thing. That actually requires you to access the files or the, the parts of the game that access files. And again, using Darkest Dungeon as an example, they did build in the ability to add class or characters and classes visuals because of the way they set up the structure of their files. So in Darkest Dungeon, if you want to add a class or change the way a class looks, then you can go into the folder that has all of the class visuals for the different classes and just add a folder, name it, add the files, and then go into the JSON files and change basically what it's looking for and add in everything you need for the class. Which is why you saw so many, you know, people make mods where they added a class to Darkest Dungeons because the game was designed specifically... I have a big roar here. That would kill the goblin. I should have moved the goblin further away. Um, you know what? Chance for repair to petrify there. Never lucky. Eh, I'll take the dodge. So, with a game that has been designed from the ground up, with the data being easily modifiable, it's much easier to mod in extra classes and things like that than a game where it's all locked behind whatever. Actually, wait, she has Venom. That's actually a lot less damage than I was expecting. Okay. Um, but then anything that's a complete gameplay overhaul usually involves actually gaining access to and modifying the lines of code. Uh, but right, back to, back to the original question. So, a developer, short of making their game fully accessible in just the documents on a player's computer, uh, the ways that they can... Ooh, I can actually use a fire spell here. Uh, the ways that they can make a game more easily moddable largely just consists of having the data more easily accessible. Uh, luring step. 30% chance of inflicting random status effect. Okay. I'll do that. Never lucky. It's okay. Stand by, and then get a heal off on... Dude, I could just cure him, actually. That might be the better choice. If the goblin dies, he dies. Alright, so... If... We're, we're gonna look later this evening at this game in you know in particular, and I'll be able to do a much better explanation of modding in general while I'm looking through the files that are on my computer for this game and, you know, pointing out where things could have been made easier or are easy to mod. Also, the counterattack paralyzed there, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so, I'm hoping, what I'm, what I'm hoping to see to be able to mod this game more easily and quickly is if the data is in any kind, there, there's actually, it's, JSON's not the only one, any kind of text format that the game pulls data from will make it easier to mod. Max Rage, sounds good. That's a lot of damage, but it's a 37% chance to hit. 
Can I get behind him? Not with him. Not with him either. Okay. Um, but if they have data accessible via okay. text files, then we'll be able to change stuff. We might be able to change ability ranges. We might be able to change numbers like damage and... Ooh, actually, that's, that's a play. Move. Take the swing. 82%. I'll take it. I'll miss it. It's fine. Don't get petrified. Thank you. Um, and then we can breath here. But if... Man, it's so hard to keep track of my train of thought and play the game. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot easier to talk about modding once I'm actually in the files instead of playing the game itself. But... Yeah, if they, if they have text files for the data, then changing any number in the game will actually be very easy. Uh, if, on the other hand, they have all their data locked away in the actual build itself, it's going to be much more difficult. Ah, right, that thing. Okay. That goblin didn't need to die. It only died because I'm bad and should feel bad. But, yes, so... Depending on the build, and the way that the game is built, it might be very difficult to get to any of the files, to any of the data, to be able to do much of anything. And I'm going to try my hardest to gain access to whatever I can. But uh, if the developers have built the game without modding as a centralized you know, goal, and a thing that they really were trying hard to make happen, it's probably going to be somewhat difficult to get it done. But that's fine. That's a kill! Beautiful. Bang. Unfortunately, one turn too late to save our goblin. Okay, he's got bucklers with knives everywhere. That's interesting. Cool, we unlocked Paladin and Dark Knight, so I'll be able to show the class change system better now. But yeah, so in short, <laughs> trying to trying to summarize a bit. Oh, we did get a we get a replacement Gigas for the one we lost. But in short, we're gonna see later on today how much we can gain access to, and I'm really hoping, at the very least, there will be text files to edit. Wait, really? Rocks don't petrify? They don't petrify. Oh, wow. That's a massive change. Okay, so now they're just, uh... Now they're just useful, really, as flankers, then. If you can't get the petrifies off. But that's fine. I'm I'm worried about this swordsman because I saw how easy it was for him to dodge previous attempts to hit him. Or the the last swordsman. Okay, I need to get behind this guy, and I'm going to do it with this this high dog outside of rune area, just to get the higher hit chance here. 83%, much better. But yeah, the, uh, the, the Steam Workshop has made people's understanding of modding really problematic. I actually should have done this before so he didn't counterattack, potentially. Oh, he didn't get paralyzed anyway, so it's fine. Um, but like, the, the Steam Workshop has kind of like pushed mods into the mainstream while not actually making sure people understand how difficult it can be to mod. Um, so, generally speaking, a game is going to be built with the majority of its files not freely accessible, just because if they were all freely accessible, then the game would have to actually compile itself every time you launched it, which would make things much, much slower. So there's a lot of the data that just has to be inherently available, or like inherently put together 
Actually, that's a great analogy. Legos. So, whenever you're making a game, you're taking all the bricks and you're putting them together into a thing. Whether it be a building or a car or whatever. And the accessibility that the player has to files is basically you have the car finished and it's how many of those pieces the player can have access to removing and putting back without just completely breaking the car. And if there's too many pieces... You know what? This analogy is terrible. I, I changed my mind. It, it's a bad analogy. Um, <laughs> it's just... The, the amount of control and access that you give a player makes it so that the game is less performant and less able to function before, you know, things start breaking or before you have to spend a lot of time making it work. So, absolutely going to heal him. So you can make every single file, every line of code, fully accessible to the player. But it would literally take... So, building a game, depending on the size of the game and how many lines of code and how many files there are, can take hours, easily. And if every file was fully accessible and editable by the player, if you wanted to give the player that ability... Defense skill? Oh. Huh. So that's a thing Lizardmen can do. I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, so th having the game not built together would require the game to compile itself for potentially hours before the player could actually play after launching the game. Also, a paralyze on their here or on their uh, room night. That's big. That's really big. very nice. But. You also can choose which files are not included in the compile and are instead stored in a resources folder. So by storing a file in a resources folder, that allows the player to literally just open the folder on their computer and have full access to the file. You can include code in resources. You can include art in resources. You can include text files that carry statistics and variables and things. Um, but it is potentially problematic if you include too much data in the resources folder because the game has to load the resources folder every single time it launches. And it has to, you know, go through all the files. That's a horrible hit chance. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna breath here, get the kill with the dragon. And then, nice, then move the snake in and see if we can get a hit on the rock. Nice. Alright. And yeah, we might as well. He can't really do anything else, so... Oh, nice hit. Nice crit. And he's fainted. Um, actually, Tarot, Taro, uh, Trigger, you guys are both really familiar. Is Does faint prevent them from acting or just counterattacking? Oh, they cured they cured his paralysis. Okay. Um I'm going to move him back. Uh pop a heal. Uh I'm out of heals. Okay. What is my hit chance here? 50-50. Oh boy. That's not even a kill. Alright, so I need to get him out of there. Um, keep him stunned until they get attacked once or it naturally fades. Okay. So, until I hit them once, they are not going to be able to do anything. I don't want to end troops movement. Yo, it scares me how many things is like one click away from terrible. So if you just click a, a hex, the first thing that's highlighted is end troops move. So if you accidentally double click an empty hex, you end the round for that squad. That is terrible UX. 
like absolutely terrible UX. Um, and UX, of course, meaning user experience. I, I gotta remember, I'm not talking to game devs, so I have to be, I have to be clear. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the UX is just kind of a measure for how the player interacts with the game and how difficult or easy it is for things to happen. How much effort it takes to get in a particular outcome. 50-50? Please don't crit. Okay. So as long as he doesn't crit, the... And then again, he also has the golem there. Do we have any MP left? No, we don't. Okay then. I'm going to move the unicorn forward, hoping the golem punches the unicorn. Then again, we might be able to get a kill here. Okay, so by moving him around to here. We have him surrounded. So yeah, now we have a 100% hit chance. Alright. It's 8 damage. Okay, we definitely have hit in the way here. So... That's a hit. Don't kill. Nope, not even close. Move. That would have been catastrophic if I hit standby. <laughs> Alright, and this should be a kill. Beautiful. Nice. And we win. So yeah, I think I was pretty clear with the tangent about modding. Um... Although the tangent to the tangent about Steam Workshop. So, the way Steam Workshop works is basically uh, Steam... So when you upload a game to Steam to sell, it creates a build of the game on Steam's server. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to give players access to parts of the game that normally would be inaccessible to a full build, but when they go to play the game, Steam has it compiled already with anything that they've installed from Steam Workshop, so they don't have to wait for it to compile when they launch the game. Um, now, doing that does create problems because it's very easy, if you make certain things accessible, to be modified. It makes it very easy for people to break the game, so it just doesn't work anymore. And then also, uh, there's, I'm sure anyone who's used Steam, <laughs> Steam Workshop uh, for very popular games, there's a lot of people who think they know what they're doing with Steam Workshop and just have no clue and it's miserable. Okay, this is actually the one that I thought that one was. Oh! Oh, we're against him. So... Yeah, Manasilesia, for those of you who don't know, uh, this dude's a total chad. And we're sending a weak team against him. So our goal here is to kill some monsters and run away, basically. Yeah, oh no, Rudo, exactly. <laughs> Big armor, big sword, big swagger. He's scary. Also, 760 health. And he's the one closest to us. That's unfortunate. This dude's a beast. Untainted path. 270 power plus 20 accuracy. Does he actually? Yeah, he has the mana to use it. It's 230 mana, but he can use it. It's basically a one-hit kill. He also has a Divine Blade that gives him 8 attack and plus 5% accuracy. And a bunch more white. Awesome. Not ideal. I think we're actually going to turtle this. We're going to put our casters in the back row. Put our front line in a wall formation and just hope that we can outlast. 
Uh, healer. X. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and authorize that. Yeah, so for anyone who's unfamiliar with the story, I've managed to stay relatively spoiler free, but I know that Rudo is really a bad dude in every meaning of the word. Okay, actually, I want to move my Temple Knight right next to the Gigas. And actually, I should have paid attention to terrain bonuses and things. And now that I know he has the defense thing, I have no problem leaving him on the end. Move our healer in. Okay. So, Rudo is going to be able to delete any one unit that he chooses. I hope it's not one of our uh, commanders, because I don't want to lose monsters and give them to the enemy. Alright, so Dancer. Wait, Dancer doesn't have any abilities? Does have abilities, but can't use them right now? Wait. Hold on, what? Okay, dual cross... Ah, because there's no enemies in range, of course. Okay, that makes sense. So, this is an entire support group. We will absolutely leave the... No, we'll move... Ah, then again, no, we'll leave it in the forest. That way we can fall back with the high dog if we need to. Uh, put healer... Yeah, we'll just keep the healer there. Um... Spell break. Dispels all buffs and debuffs from any single unit. Does not affect veil or status condition. Okay. Resist? Sure. Just get some experience on the mermaid. That's fine. Alright. So, good thing about turtling is we're going to be spending... Wait, he's not going to advance? Okay. Then I guess I will push forward a little bit. I'm trying to draw him into a fight where he moves up to me first so I can hopefully do something about it. So, right, I think I covered the tangent of Steam Workshop, or the tangent of the tangent of Steam Workshop. Um, yeah. No, not there. Uh, so, making a game more moddable is potentially a good thing, potentially a bad thing, depending on exactly how delicate your systems are. Uh, my game, my game. I am actually designing it with some modification, easy to do, easy, easily accessible, and some locked more away uh, for the more delicate systems. That if there's you know modifications made, will probably break. But I am trying to make as many things available just to player customization without modding being necessary. So the the big thing that I'm I'm currently trying to kind of kick around how exactly I want to do it is I have to build for the story mode. I have to build an entire system that will allow me to craft the story mode to actually make all the character interactions work, to make the um, you know the the player able to actually interface with and interact with the story in any meaningful way. And then also there's the system that I've developed to have the map be built with the territories, with the data that's needed for the territories, etc, etc. Um, and I was like, you know what, I have to make all these tools so I can just 
change how I make them a little bit to make them fully accessible to the player through the game itself. So the ability to select a map from a list of maps that's in a specific folder allows players to play any custom map that any other player will have made using the tool system that I've developed for my own use because you have to make your own tool to be able to do certain things in a game or as a developer and that's really that's just a matter of I'm willing to invest the extra time and effort to make it user friendly to make it basically unbreakable or at least hard to break and to make it so that it looks good and is intuitive to use possibly also spending time to make a tutorial for it so that people can more easily use it um, but I feel like it's worth it because it's something that will set my game apart from other games of the same genre. Like, I don't know of very many strategy games at all that actually allow players to make their own maps. Oh, I really don't want to push in, but I really want to push in. His range is two, right? Yeah. So he's not going to be able, but... Let's see, what? I can holy word. It will not be very access uh very successful though. Yeah. Just like in Legend of Force and a Holy Word is a giant AoE that does very little damage per enemy. I don't have anything else that's offensive. Okay. That's not good. So Yeah, I'm I'm making considerations during my development, specifically with the idea of I want to make everything that I can optional, so that the player can tailor their experience to their liking. I'm trying to make everything that I possibly can um, modifiable and adjustable, and I'm trying to give the ability for people who are fans of Brigandine, who want to try their hand at making a world and a story, able to do that. Because I know that 20 years later, there's still a fan base for it. So, I think giving the people who are interested in doing so the ability to craft their own, while not mechanical, you know, functioning game, they can at least craft the experience that they would like to share. Uh, I know Frost PDP has mentioned uh, some story stuff, or that he's a, he's a writer. So he's a storyteller by default. And I know Trigger has expressed interest in, well, I, I believe uh, he actually had worked with the people that tried to do Compendium of War, the horribly misguided people. Um, and unfortunately had to throw out a lot of, or had thrown out a lot of ideas and things and was unsuccessful in, there or they were unsuccessful in their attempt to make brigandine for five thousand dollars which is no surprise uh without some kind of serious actually this would be an encasement but without without a serious like bootstrapping it is not possible to make a game for five thousand dollars it's just it's not airy rush that sounds cool. 154 damage, critic rate 15%? Sure. Alright. And go ahead and pop a heal here. Why not? I'm really worried Rudo's just gonna come around the corner and just, like, curb stomp somebody. But I think his big one-hit kill ability is a pre-move, so he's not going to be able to use it until he moves forward. But yeah, so... Uh, I believe I mentioned earlier... I, I know I did I mentioned earlier. The, uh, so the healing between battles, um, by default, it's going to be set so that a percentage of max health and mana and resolve is 
healed between battles, like uh, whenever you go back to the organized phase, at the start of the organized phase it'll heal everyone a percentage of their max. But that will be adjustable in the options menu, in the main menu of the game, for both story mode and for just the skirmish or free play or whatever I end up calling it. Where you can set it, if you want a traditional Brigandine experience, as far as, you know, everything healing and having full MP every battle, you can, you're gonna, there, there's an option in the menu to just set that to 100% instead of the percentage it's at. Also, if the percentage I decide on is too high or too low, the same option will allow the player to go in and say, I want the, you know, units to heal 50% of their max health instead of... Ooh, I can actually potentially paralyze a dragon here. Or I miss, that's fine. I just, I feel, it, it's one of my core philosophies as a game developer, is I want to let the player have the experience that they want to have. Whether or not it's the experience I initially intended for them to have. So I try to include every tool I can to allow them to do that. Mm. I don't think I can move and then, no. Uh, abilities, both range one. Okay. So I think our yeah, we're just, we're gonna use our magic. We're not gonna stick around, probably, for more than just killing this phoenix. So wait, Charm Song is in water. Windcaster is in water. Light. Resist. Uh, I actually don't see very many mages. This is mostly just for experience. Okay. Yeah, we'll heal the unicorn that ended up on the front line accidentally. <laughs> Alright. And worth noting, whenever we retreat, we're going to need to retreat with Team C first. So, Rudo casts... Oh no, the Phoenix casts Flame. There's Holy Word. Ow. That's a lot of damage. Not a lot of damage to any particular single target, but... What? Wait, he can do that after moving? He can do it after moving? Wait, are you serious? It's not a pre-move. He can walk up and just one-shot anything. That's insane. That is so insane. Alright, well... No, not Horn Attack. Uh, magic, Heal, Doggo. Alright, Doggo is going to... Just hit what he can. Alright, stand by. I mean... So this is the thing, I'm pretty sure if I stick around at this point that Rudo's just gonna kill everyone. Ah, whatever. It's fine if we lose a bunch of monsters here. This isn't exactly a primary team. Wait, he's not... He's not, uh... I thought we had him surrounded. Oh, right! Right, 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 right. Because it died. Uh, sure. Miss. Okay. Oh, okay, that's a change. So, in, uh, in Forsena, 
they actually had it so that if you missed a spell or if you missed an attack, you didn't get any experience. But we just missed the silent and we still got experience on the end. That's good. That is a good quality of life change. I mean, there's no way we're going to kill the phoenix now. Because they got the heal off. I mean, if we big roar, we could potentially actually kill our own. Does that give us experience if we do? It won't kill. Okay, never mind. No need to test that then. We'll just uh, pop a heal on him. And pull him back so that he can't as easily be attacked and... Yeah, we're not even going to take the damage there. Skill. Mm. I mean... I don't know. There's a chance. It would be really good if we were able to, but I'm not going to bank on it. Still have to do 130 damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately you can't really determine who they're going to attack. But, uh, yeah, the, the comment was just bring a, bring a weaker monster to sacrifice to Rudolph. Uh, that's, that's not really something you can reliably count on. Unless there's some way to abuse the AI that I'm just not aware of. Okay, Lizardmen don't mess around. He just got attacked by like four different people and he's still alive. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Okay, unicorn. Crit. <laughs> Alright. Divine Ray, unicorn's dead. Yeah. Okay, Doggo gets a counter attack. Wait a second. It wasn't the Mana Miracle that he killed, was it? No, this one's the Mana Miracle. Okay. Uh, we need to retreat before that one dies. Hi. That being said, uh, can we kill? No, we cannot. Hmm. Well, I said before, C needs to be the team that retreats first. It's true. Alright, that's unfortunate. Okay, attacks! Attacks that miss do not get bonus, uh, or not bonus, do, do not give experience. I'm just curious. So, melee attack against an archer. Archer still gets to counterattack. So, that was a problem in the original Force Net as well. Yeah, definitely heal the Mana Miracle. Um, that was a problem with Force Net as well. Is the, the Centaur was just one of the strongest units. Because you could attack from range and not get counterattacked. And then, if you're attacked in melee, you're still able to counterattack. Which is... kind of broken. Yeah, we definitely want to retreat to that one. So, here we go, retreating. Alright. And we still have everyone else left. So, I, I definitely have it. Ooh, okay, Lizardman down. Aw, oh, and they heal, so we're not even going to kill the phoenix. Yeah, this this was just absolutely a failure. Rudo one-shotting, and... Ooh, magic pixel. Can we retreat before he dies? Yes, we can. Okay. Beautiful. Like, there's, there's no way. But I'm still going to take a swing. So yeah, for my game, if you are a ranged character, you're able to counterattack whenever you're attacked from range. 
Uh, but if you're a melee character, you can only counterattack melee. However, if a melee character attacks a ranged character, there is no counterattack because you're within their range. So, it's just a slight balancing tweak that reduces the strength of archers and mages because it's like already having access to ranged attacks means you can fire on people and not take any counterattack damage, which is very strong to begin with. And then just hit him for some experience. Um, and then having, you know, having the ability to also counterattack whenever you're attacked, just, it's a bit too strong. So you get, you know, you get a strong centaur team in Forsena, and you can just kind of burn through people very easily. Although being able to counterattack, I noticed the the ranged attack did provoke a counterattack from the other ranged enemy. That's that's a nice improvement from Forsena to Renersia. I I definitely think that's a good design decision because before, even if you were shooting a ranged, or I say before in Forsena, uh, whenever you shot a ranged character with a ranged character, there was still no counterattack. So yeah, we killed absolutely nothing. We lost a rock, a lizard man, an imp, and a unicorn. Okay. <laughs> That's rough. Okay, another story beat. Time to drink some coffee then. Okay, so apparently the guys with the fins or whatever as ears, those are blackbirds. And apparently they're treated as untouchables. Okay. Tried to put the mask on. Kora, Darian! Kisama Elza Sama no Maide, mask o hazu shteoru to wa ittai dou yu tsumori ja? Matchi nasai! Black Bird no shikusha ni chikazuita watashi ga warui no. エルザお姉ちゃん、あの人言っちゃったよ。え<笑> Okay, so are they blackbirds or are they barrets? そんなことないわ。おじさんにはあの音色の良さがわからないだけ。ちえ、大魔法師ムーワ様のお孫さんにそう言われちゃ。こちらも何も返せま。あの人のこといじめたら、おじいちゃんに言いつけちゃうからね
See, I've recovered enough from the opening expo exposition that I'm actually caring about reading this. This is interesting. But now I feel like I missed some important explanation of uh, proper nouns. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and like rewatch the exposition. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so the Blackbirds is the unit of knights. Got it. Okay, and yeah, inane bigotry. Yep. That is racist. Yoshi,その時は私が大魔法師になってお手お願いね、主が。you fight Grim War courses. So wait, she's in which school? <laughs> wait, she hasn't graduated which school and she's already fighting in battles on my behalf? Huh. Is it just me, or was this such a missed opportunity to just have the Barrett playing some blues? Or, or would that be, like, too on the nose? Wait, more? No, 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 no. The last story beat was enough. That would have been... Ah, oh, they just had to cram another one in. Like, I've only been playing for... What, three and a half hours? I've only been playing for three and a half hours, and this is already... The third or fourth time that I've been like, okay, that's a great place to end, and then they just kept going. The fighting in the suit had as far as. Okay. <sighs> yeah, so this is just the backstory of the sword. Which I'm sure is a lot of lore, you know, for the entire setting of the continent and everything, but... Uh, it's... it's the backstory of a sword. I just got done with the story beat. I want to get back to the game. kidding me. Okay, at least this is an introduction as a knight joins me. Okay. That's, that's much more acceptable. I thought they were seriously about to go into a third story beat. Although I guess technically this is a third story beat. But it's, again, in relation to gaining an ally rather than just Fluff. Alright. So, let's take a look at, first of all, this new person we got. She's an enchantress. Okay. We need to change her to a class that actually has real magic. So this is a great time to jump into the class change system. So, yeah, she's an enchantress, which, as we saw, has, like... Wait, do clerics have...? Okay, so she actually does have frost. I didn't... Okay, she does have frost, so she has an offensive spell. 
Uh, this would give her Protect Silent and make her slightly better in actual physical combat. Would also give her Preferred Terrain Forest, which we're in forests right now. The Bard type is the one that's good in forests. So I think once we hit Enchantress Mastery 5, so if you, so right here you'll see, note, at proficiency tier 5, spells and some skills can be carried over. So this is one of the things that I absolutely adored about Brigandine. Whenever you master a class, whenever you've put in enough levels to become a master of a class, those things, those particular traits that transfer, become a permanent permanent part of that knight, that character. So once she gets to Mastery 5 of Enchantress, she will, for the rest of the game, have Frost Charm in flight. Period. No matter what she becomes. If she becomes a Dancer or a Lancer, it doesn't matter. She'll still have access to those spells. And that that is such an awesome concept. It's kind of similar to the, the job system in like Final Fantasy Tactics, where you can learn skills per job, but unlike there, where you have to choose between the two types of job, the, the one you're currently in, and the one that you also have access to, in this game it doesn't matter, you have access to everything from every class that you've mastered. But only the transferable things. So like Hunter here, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to have anything that trans... Oh, there we go. Accuracy up is the transfer. So, you can build a particular knight in so many different ways, with so many different combos. Counter damage up, yeah. So how do I see... Oh, there we go. Proficiency 3. So we need to gain two more levels with Sugar before we can cross-class her into Bard. Which I think is actually going to be a pretty good idea. It'll give us a couple more spells, and it will give us some more... Uh, it'll reduce our mana by 30, and actually not give us any hit points. But it will give us agility and defense. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good idea. But again, I'm not trying to be optimal, I'm just trying to see what I can do. Also, Proficiency 2, as a wizard... So we need to gain three more levels with him before he hits. And she's a uh, she's a ruler, so she just has her own special unique class. Let's look around at other people. See if there's anyone else we want to class up. Uh, Kane is proficiency two. We're gonna leave him right as is then. Conrad is proficiency five, so we can actually change Conrad. What do we want to change him to? Wait, seriously? All he keeps from Knight is heal? So wait, you're saying if I change him to a Barbarian... The only thing he keeps is heal. That makes no sense. Knight is not... Knight is not a physical class. And because he didn't master Fighter before becoming a knight, he didn't get the hit point recovery. That's a, that's a pretty bad design decision. Giving him heal, a spell, as a physical class. Although we can level him up to Dark Knight or Paladin. Oh, once he's level 20, he can't even become one. Okay. Alright. And as a Barbarian, he would get counter damage up. As a Thief, he would get evasion up. That could be fun. Make him a tanky evade tank. Accuracy up for... Yeah, these... These melee classes are only giving... Yeah, here we'd be able to get flame power and excel. But again... He's a melee type. Like, 
the stats he has. Strength. Actually, he has 96 intelligence. Okay. We're making him a mage. We are we are <laughs> we are legitimately going to make Conrad into a mage. And then we're gonna go back to like Paladin or Dark Knight or whatever. But he has really high intelligence. So being able to cast flame from the front line. It's gonna be pretty good. Okay, he does have hit point recover B. Okay. So he did keep the fighter mastery ability. That's good. That's gonna be fun to mess with. Uh, we got Fighter Marcosius, who is already proficiency 5. So do we swap him to Barbarian for one ra or for one level? Counter damage up? Eh. What about Thief? Quick cut steel. Evasion up. What's his uh what's his agility like? 65? So another thing is the agility uh growth on a thief should be higher. Hey, what's up, Frost? Sorry if uh sorry if you've been here a minute. I'm uh I'm using my phone for the chat while I play, since I only have one monitor. But if I if I start streaming more often, this is really fun. So if I start streaming more often, I'll definitely have to pick up a second monitor and get that uh, get that going. So gaining an extra thirty MP as a thief is kind of whatever. We'd be losing out on hit points. We'd be losing out on attack, defense, and strength. What about Monk? No. No, we're, we're gonna go Thief. I think we're gonna have some fun with a Thief-Fighter hybrid. Again, not trying to play optimally, just trying to have a good time and toy around with it. So we've got Conrad turned into a mage, we've got Marcosius turned into a thief, and Kane is not mastered yet. So he's only got proficiency too, so we'll leave him as is. And then Patricia the Bard is level 1, although we need to give her some more monsters. See. Summon a couple dragons. And fit them in wherever we can. Alright, so she's got the Gigas and a dragon. And 22 left, so we can actually give her an imp as well. And then if we move this unicorn here that allows us to put another dragon here so now we've got three dragons along with Kane that should be fun all right anyone else leveled up enough to do some class oh we also need to summon some stuff here it's kind of sad that rocks don't per uh, don't petrify anymore but that is also like the, I think, strongest unit we can get here. Get a couple imps for support, I think. And also for fodder in case Rudo attacks us. <laughs> oh, just, just move them to the front. Alright. So... We have... Uh, 103 there. We have 104 there. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that so that I have the two rocks on the same team that aren't Mana Miracles so I can keep track of the Mana Miracle. I'll be very sad if I lose that thing. Alright, so we have a solid front line. We have heals. And Mermaid doesn't really do much. Was there anything else? 
that I could summon here. You know what? I'll summon another imp. Being able to throw protect on more things throughout the battle is going to be useful. Oh, also that's a Mana Miracle Imp. Didn't even notice. Did not even notice. So, if I switch him there, like that, I can do that. I have two Imps to keep protect on the Mana Miracle uh, rock the entire time. And I could also throw another Imp in there, but I think three Imps is enough. Is it? No, I think I will. <laughs> I am going to summon one more imp. Why not? All the little furry boys. Oh, I didn't mean to summon another. Oops. Yeah. Oops. I mean, sh sure. Five imps. <laughs> Alright, and then up here we have these guys. Oh, we actually captured... Um... Golem? Golem. That's unfortunate. Hmm... So... If we do that... Yeah, if we if we shift the unicorn over... Nah, we'll, we'll shift the golem over. So this is more of like a flanking team. We've got a rock, we've got a couple dogs, we've got a gigas. This is a flanking team, whereas... Darian's here is definitely a frontline team. And I like that this class up shows that we are able to class something up. Oh, him. Okay, so he has reached proficiency 5 as a knight. So now we can level up to Dark Knight or Paladin. Uh, Paladins have more health, slightly less strength and attack, more defense, white element versus black element. Holy Slash, Holy Break, Judgment, Iron Aura. Ter Dark Slash, Terror Impact, Dark Storm, Iron Aura. Divine Ray versus Curse. And Paladin is Shield Block S as compared to Shield Block A. I mean... Deals moderate damage to a single enemy. Deals massive damage to a single adjacent enemy, low accuracy, deals massive damage to a single adjacent enemy, versus... Oops. I did not mean to hit that. I meant to hit that. Versus deals major enemy... Uh, dead. Wow. Same thing, same thing, just evil. Uh, deals major, or not necessarily evil, just darkness. Um, deals major damage to all units within a 1 hex radius, and increases your attack and defense for a limited number of turns, never misses. Okay, that, that I want to play with. That I definitely want to play with. We're going to do that. That's a kind of cool little model. Alright, Darian is now a Dark Knight. That's going to be fun to mess around with. Um, we don't need any more troops. No, we're good on troops. Alright, and then last but not least... Nobody here can level up our check, right? But we did capture... A Pegasus... As well as another Unicorn. I mean... I kind of want to... Actually, she should go elsewhere. So it's fine that Sugar here is a water elemental, because she's got the demon, she's got the... you know, she's... 
well defended. Actually, I'm also going to give her, you know, that mermaid. Because we're against largely, whenever we're fighting Shinobi, we're largely against the nature element rather than fire. So Entrantresses and water monsters like the Serp, uh, Giant Snake are going to be much better against the Norzalio teams. So I'm also going to move Leanne back over here. So we've got our three defenders here. We've got our three defenders here. And we could summon, and we'll summon in him. Having protect is just really good. It, it's always useful to have a throwaway monster that you can just use to keep a better monster alive. So there we go. I think we're set there. Let's end phase. Check chat. Oh yeah, Moss Man, I, I definitely love the artwork. This this game, like I I liked the artwork of so that this is the sequel to Legend of Forcena, which was a 1998 release on the PlayStation 1. And even then, the character art was just so cool and very good. Uh, just really, it really captured the, the fantasy feel. And then in combat, uh, the, the PlayStation for Legend of Forcena is what it was called, it was bringing in Legend of Forcena. Uh, in combat, it used sprites. And then whenever you actually did an attack or cast a spell, it would show the, you know, chunky 3D models from the PlayStation 1 era. And it was glorious. Just the the chunkiness of 3D models in comparison to the elegance and beauty of all of the um all of the, you know, sprites and all of the the character portraits and everything. It was just good times. Okay, is this still Rudo? No. Okay, they moved Rudo away, apparently. Huh. I'm not gonna pick a fight with them yet. I mean... I think I'm going to, since I have the highest combat power here, other than Narage, my attack should go off. Unless Narage attacks me. I'm gonna go for some easy experience. And then here. I'm also gonna go and try to attack that. Because we're just playing super aggro to see what we can get away with. And yeah, Moss, like, don't don't expect me to be playing this optimally. I'm really just having a good time. Just messing around, getting kills with unicorns and things. Like, unicorns being the healer unit in the game, or the primary healer unit. Very weak in uh, attacks, but yeah, it's, it's a good game. Despite my complaints that I've levied, it I still like it. It's, it's good. But yeah, I've already I've gone on many tangents about everything from storytelling in games, uh, you know, controlling heavy exposition, the you know game systems themselves. Uh, we touched briefly on the concept of modding and Steam Workshop, and you know after well, maybe you don't know, but. After I take a break here in several hours, I'm gonna come back and do like a modding attempt stream, which should be pretty fun, just digging through the files and seeing what we have access to. But yeah, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the chat. I am, uh, I am multitasking, sort of, and using the, using my phone for the chat and using, I only have the one monitor, so. 
Uh, I might take a minute to respond whenever you say something, but otherwise, yeah, just uh, drop whatever you want in the chat, I'll respond, and we're having a good time. I just know uh, most of chat has been dominated by first Valkos and then Taro. <laughs> Been, it's been a pretty good time, but feel free to speak up and say, you know, whatever you think about the game. Ask any questions. I really don't mind. Just here to hang out with you all and play some video games. Alright. I think we'll try to move kind of... Oops. Kind of together. And this is actually something I haven't mentioned yet about my game. Um, yeah, this is the worst part of Brigandine. I think everyone unanimously agrees. Spending three rounds just walking at the enemy before you actually get into any kind of fight. This is problematic. Just, it, it's a problematic design. So, for my game, I went with the tried and true deployment zones idea. It's been a thing in tabletop war games since the invention of tabletop war games. You start with an area you can deploy in, and then you set up your units in whatever formations you'd like, and then the battle commences. So, yeah, in, in the both the prototype and the vertical slice that I had previously built, uh, I made sure that within two turns, like, if you wanted to play aggressively, you could attack the enemies if, if you position aggressively and you push. You should be able to start fighting with the enemies within the second turn. So, at most one turn to push, to, to reposition and then, from then on, it should be combat. Instead of, it's gonna take me three turns to get there, if I'm just running as fast as I can. Actually, it might take me longer. I'm literally moving two hexes at a time. Glorious. Alright, so we're gonna actually need to swing that squad behind the other two squads. Because it has absolutely zero frontliners. Alright, so... Alright, that's awkward. He moves there. He moves there. Go get there. Unicorn behind. Archer over there. Elemental behind, waiting for a chance to do some flanking. Yeah, this is... The, the terrain movement penalties, in addition to just how long it takes to get across the battlefield, means that even once I'm within a turn or two of starting the fight, I'm going to not be in any form of, you know, cogent formation or positioning unless I want to take even longer to get there and just move like two hexes at a time. And they're just going to sit there. Come on, push forward, please. Okay, they pushed forward one hex. That means even next turn I'm not going to be able to start fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um... Taro, I, I definitely could understand the wanting to push back a stream to be able to just do what you want, play, you know, play and mess around and have a good time without having to worry about also talking while you play. Because, I mean, I have no problem ramb rambling semi-incoherently while I do other stuff. I just get distracted pretty easily and, you know, end up either repeating the same thing multiple times or thinking that I elucidated a point and not getting there. Actually, counting my frontliners, uh, 
I actually need to take a turn. Yeah, I need to just... Okay, I need to, with A, in troop. Yes. Alright, Eliza needs to move forward to there. So that we can then move... Actually, even then. Okay. Centaur needs to swing... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Unicorn can fall back. Centaur can go there. Yeah, everyone just chills like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Streaming streaming on PC is definitely a different beast from streaming uh, console content. You don't need a special, you know, third-party device to be able to do it. You just need a program and the rig that can actually do it. So... I've been a I've been a PC gamer for a long time, and also obviously as a game developer and an artist that does 3D imaging animation, I have to have a pretty beefy rig. So even before I started doing YouTube videos, I was already running 64 gigs of RAM just because of what I do, like what I what I've been trained, you know, or not trained, but what I went to school for and what I want to do for a living kind of required me to always have a computer with really high specs, which is, you know, good up until the point where you need to replace it because it died. So, yeah, that last year I dumped a... I, I built my own computer up until the one that I'm currently running, because last year, whenever my 10-year-old computer died, I had to get a new one, and apparently... My, uh, not micro, uh, what are they called? The, the Bitcoin and stuff. The, mm, something, something, something currencies. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, apparently they are the reason why all sorts of, you know, uh, components, specifically processors and graphics cards, are insanely expensive right now unless you have a contract with a manufacturer it is it is madness like the same the same uh the same graphics card that i was able to buy like five six years ago for a hundred bucks is now like 200 something just because for some reason all of the all of the you know, Bitcoin mining people are burning through all the resources, and so they can't make graphics cards fast enough to actually fill the demand. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that ranged characters shoot back at each other now. Whoops. Punch. Miss. All right, uh, elemental, and this is part of the reason why I left that gap open. Zap. All right. I mean, I could do this, kill it, and then have Eliza standing at the front, throw a protect on her. No, never mind. She's actually acting before the imp does. Yeah, that would not be a good idea. Um, I think I'll just reposition a little bit. Alright. Hello. Move forward. I mean, kill or half health. Which would then allow me to... Wait, no. B. B is going to act for RB. So, yeah, we can kill the centaur. That's fine. I can half health that centaur. Poke. I gotta say, I really do miss the Legend of Forcina chunky 3D animations. Like, yes, 
sometimes I would turn them off if I just wanted to hurry up and play through a battle, but like, I don't know, I always, I always enjoyed just how weighty all the moves felt. Having, having a big, chunky dragon chomp on somebody. Some of the animations in this game are really, really powerful. Like, that, that stomp animation from the dragon, it's juicy. It's very nice. Of course, that being said, uh, it's not nearly as impactful as some of the other animations that I've seen. Of course, also, I think the animations were longer. Like, these animations all seem to be probably at most 30 frames. And that's... That's mostly the special ability ones that I've seen. They're very quick is what I mean. So like if if the animation takes that, you know, that fraction of a second, it's a very simplified animation. And by having a very simplified animation, you don't have as much of the basics going on to really sell the weight and motion of the movement. Like, the, the spear poke from the Rune Knight felt less impactful than the wind-up spin spell of the end. Just in, in, from an animation perspective. And that's just an interesting decision they made. That's really all that is. I'm not hating on it at all, because, you know... A lot of people will get sick of animations if they're just on and on and on too long, over and over and over again. Yeah, I'll do that. Nice, crit. So my goal is to obviously protect that, uh... There's nobody in range, huh? Well then. Oh yeah, my goal is obviously to protect the dev or the demon now that she's over there on the flank, but it shouldn't be too bad. Because right now all they have is the dog there. And if it's just the dog, I'm not too worried at all. Ooh. I could actually. That would hit all three of those. Hmm. But that would require me to move him. Well, he can't really cast a spell on anyone right now anyway. I think I would want him right where this golem is, so... Step forward. I mean, I could... I could, but I'd rather take down a centaur. Or miss a centaur. That works too. That absolutely works, too. Uh, so now I can move him over here. Elemental is now in his rune area. Drop a flame shot and burn. Okay. Move the healer in. Remember this time that I can't actually shoot and not get shot back by the centaur, so I'll shoot the imp instead. <coughs> Sorry about that. Sorry if that was loud. <laughs> I tried to get a as far away from the mic as I could, as quick as I could when I felt that coming. This centaur is just dodging all the shots. Alright, now then. Skill, Hunter Swing, does not kill. Wow, okay. That kind of ruins my plan. That kind of really ruins my plan. I, I thought I was going to be able to kill with the High Lizardmen. And then come in with the Dragon, potentially, and attack the Temple Knight there. Huh. Alright. I could hit him with flame. 
but then I wouldn't be able to kill him to move the dragon. And my, my goal here is to try to get the dragon, the Mana Miracle Flame Dragon, to start smacking Carla around. And I'm not seeing how I'm going to do it. <sighs> At least not this round. So, if I do this... Actually, I don't think that's going to be enough, even. Alright. Nice crit. Nice miss. And now, flame kills. Nice. Unfortunately, like I said, we're not able to actually move in and get anything out of it, really. I mean, the Unicorn has 446 hit points. Yeah, appreciate it there. <laughs> I'm not one to sneeze often, but when I do, it, it feels really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, high pressure or something. The weather's been really crazy, going hot and hot, humid. Very unfortunate, but... Yeah, I think I am going to be a little nuts here, because I think dropping him down to 69, I think our, I think our Centaur will be able to finish him here. Yep, beautiful. And the sooner we can get High Centaurs, the sooner we can get range 3 archery. And that's a High Centaur. Okay, um... Just in case Carla steps forward and... hits the demon, we're gonna go ahead and cure the demon. Alright. So what are they gonna do now? Okay. Hey, finally one of the uh, golems smacked somebody and actually hit. That's nice. That's an interesting decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that coming. Okay, so that centaur... I don't know what they were thinking. I have no idea what they were thinking. Like, that is such a bad move. Alright, Pegasus is doing exactly what I was hoping. Soaking a little bit of damage, but not dying. So the goal now is, whenever it's my turn again with uh, Squad C, I pull back the Pegasus and I put the dragon where it is and smack the commander. But for now, magic. That's not going to do much. That's a kill, though. Oh, but it's such an easy kill for pretty much anything else. Whereas here, I could actually really chunk the wyvern. I think that's the better choice. I think just the, the maximizing the damage is more important than, uh... Hmm... Um... Yeah, this is kind of useless. I mean, I guess I'll resist on... The... Roll? No. Yeah. Resist on the lizard man. Sure. No, not silent. Protect. Protect on the dragon. I would have loved to have protected the lizard man, but unfortunately, it is a three range instead of a four range like it used to be. Which is absolutely one of the first things I will change if I'm able to access the uh, 
the data for these abilities themselves. So, no, not skill. Curse? That's pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Better than nothing. Alright, turn A. Once again, do a nice little flame shot. You know, considering it's a strong yellow... Oh, that's right, she's blue and green. She's not just green. I was gonna say, considering the you know, elemental difference, but never mind. So, Golem Punch. Okay. So, uh, we need to... Just out of range. Alright, we need to do something about everyone. This almost kills the Wyvern. And I think it actually does better than... Yeah, Flame is only going to do 114. Whereas we do 72 here and we do a lot to everyone else as well. So here we go. This allows us to then... I mean, he's right there. I really want to kill him, but I just realized if I move the two spaces... No. No. Uh, these guys should still be within the radius of uh, Eliza to not have the penalties of being out of her rune area. So yeah, no. Eliza's gonna go over there and smack that centaur around. Which means I can just go and punch the dragon. And miss, of course. That's fine. Alright. Go ahead and pop a heal off on the golem, of course. Alright. Take a shot at the mage. Here we go. Here's the impactful turn. Alright. I mean, I'm not even kidding here. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we have a frontline Pegasus. Let's go. Let's go. Defense skill, 12 damage. Unfortunate. Here we have heal on the Pegasus. This is ridiculous. I love it. I love it so much. Alright, so if we move her here... Yes, they will all still be in the rune area. Beautiful. Poke. 230 damage. Beautiful. Alright. Now then. Dragon. Then again, I could actually very easily kill her. And be lined up. Okay. If the dragon hit, I could very easily kill her. Oof. I think I actually hold my attack here to soak the most damage possible. Yeah, I saw that coming. Defense skill, nice. Yeah, lizard men are no joke. That is so crazy. No peel, okay. It's gonna take us a while to grind through that hero. Especially since she's green blue. Alright. Carla. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Okay. Golem's distracted by the lizard man. Beautiful. They could trade blows for a while with neither of them dying. Yeah, this is a problem, though. 
They have so many heals. This is this is such a problem. I mean that does 118 actually. Yeah, let's do it. Every little bit helps. Alright, and then we do another curse. Alright. Nice, Archdemon. Or Archdemon, whichever you prefer. Yeah, appreciate it, uh, Menu. Have a, have a good day at work. <laughs> or at least try to, right? Alright. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the part of streaming I think I'm going to have the hardest time with is trying to figure out how to pronounce some people's names. So, if it's not Manu, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying my best. But yeah, I'm actually... I'm very happy because, like, you guys have consistently been, like, eight people in chat this entire stream, and that just blows my mind. I was expecting, like, two people here, two people there, you know, person drops in, person drops out. But the fact that I've consistently had eight people this entire stream for the last, what was that, four and a half hours? It's nutty. I, I wish, I wish the mermaid was useful. Sure. I know once she becomes a siren, she gets frost. And so then she'll be able to actually help. Alright. I'm too far away to exit blast because that would actually be pretty good if I could, but... I mean, I could weakness. 100%. 100%. We'll see how effectively that helps. Also, I'm curious if... oh. We are out of flame shots. Unfortunate. So I'm curious if that is if flame shot is countered by intelligence or defense. I mean I could still move forward and attack. But I think that would mess up my play. Um, because I think at turn or whenever it's team C's attack. I'm going to shift the lizard man around to her other side, attack her there, breath with the dragon, and then question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. I guess just move in and melee with the dragon. I haven't used the dragon's breath at all. In other news, let's kill this mage. Come on. Ah, jeez. <laughs> really? It, it's a, it's a healer. How how do you miss a healer? Oh well, it's fine. We got this. Cool. We can upgrade one of our golems now. Okay. So as I said, the plan. Ah. Let's see. Alright, get some more experience on the Pegasus. I think our Pegasus actually still has full heals left. Yeah, we haven't cast a single spell with it. That's great. Uh, go ahead and start with the Centaur. Boom, 53 damage. Beautiful. And then Lizard Man, beautiful. Defense skill, unfortunate. Unfortunate. 
Okay, can... Eliza cannot get in there. Okay. Then again... I mean... That's definitely a kill there. On the M. That would not be a kill on the healer. Neither would that. You know what? That's fine. I'm gonna smack her around a little bit while she's got the defense debuff and the attack debuff. And Eliza is gonna... If I do that, the Pegasus is out of my control range. So I have to move in, actually. Unless I want the peg. Then again, hold on, she has her attack reduced. So even if the Pegasus is out of area, it shouldn't matter. Oh, also I should probably heal Eliza if I can. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Hopefully, Eliza's able to tank, like, all these people. Area heal, that's unfortunate. But it did not hit the other commander, so... That's a paralyzed lizard man. Unfortunate. Alright, I love seeing the loop hill on the golem. Okay. Carla, what you doing? <laughs> Getting a crit. Uh-oh. I think we're about to lose the Pegasus we stole. I think we are about to lose the Pegasus we stole. Um... He has no MP left. Whatever. Uh, okay. So... We have no more curses. So we're just gonna try to chip her down. I have no heals with her, but I can cross there. Alright. 46 hit points. Not enough. I was wondering how many times we were going to be able to get away with it. With uh, getting in there. With our healers frontlining them. Okay. Next up is the rest of our squads. A and C. Oh no, no, actually they're C first. So, Cleric, Imp, Imp, Imp. And then the rest of our stuff. Which means all I actually need to do is block them from moving forward. So yeah. Did get a heal. That's unfortunate. Oh, double heal. That's really unfortunate, actually. Oh boy. They're just not cutting us a break. <laughs> Alright, so this is absolutely the point where we need to get that Pegasus out of there. Eighty-six percent? Of course, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> oh. I love this. That's so great. I mean, we can Geno Flame again, but now we're not hitting the other as well. So no, I think we're better off just going Flame on her. 161. How much is Venom? Venom is 95. Yeah, we have enough MP. Flame here. 
smack her. Alright. Not in range, nor does it have enough mana to heal. Okay, uh, this elemental cannot do anything. Wait, what? Wait, there are no adjacent enemies. Okay, whatever. Because I thought earlier there was nobody in range, so I wasn't able to hit skill. I thought that was the thing. You know what? I think my best bet is trying to kill this person first, and then worry about everything else. Alright, Eliza's turn. Pegasus, run. Just, just flat out run. And then heal yourself up over there, and then come back in. Uh, Eliza, we have a... We have Pegasus with absolutely no MP left. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish. Yeah. We're going to finish this healer. Thank you. Okay. There's a lot of enemy forces down. We caught an angel. We caught a level 8 angel. Nice. Alright. We are just stealing all of their troops. And we get right there. And poke him. Take one damage in return. I could have hit Carlo, but I figured I would bait the golem into shooting him, or hitting him, and then Carla would retreat? Really? Is this the first time we saw them retreat, or have they retreated before? Yeah, I think, I think this is the first retreat we've seen. Yeah, there's no enemies, so just cast Flight on him. Sure. Cool. Alright. Alright, so we caught ourselves an angel. Nice. That's unfortunate. Because that might have been enough to actually kill there. Yeah. And she retreats as well. Alright. Beautiful. We got a lot of stuff to level up, and an angel to put in our teams. This is actually a little problematic here. We only have so much uh, room power. Alright, so this one should be quick, in theory. This one should be quick. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that defaults to no. Like, the default cursor location on menus is just such an easily overlooked thing that really matters so much. 
Like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal when you're deploying and it automatically defaults to no and you have to hit again to confirm it. But like... This... Having standby be the thing hovered a lot of the time. Just asking. Just asking for something to go wrong. Alright. We're gonna see how this Dark Knight class goes now. Got ourselves a healer. Big guy. Plant. And I'm still not sure. Like, this rogue class... Like, Mirage Hit looks really strong. So I think she's gonna be a frontliner more than anything. But I'll make her like a frontliner that hangs back a minute from... others. Gonna go with the classic zigzag formation. With flankers on the left. I should have actually stayed out of the forest because I probably would be able to get further next round if I hadn't gotten into it. I mean, it is nice that unlike Legend of Forcena, they don't just auto-retreat when there's only two of them. Unless they just make it last longer and now they retreat once you get closer. Yeah, I don't need to worry about any kind of holding any kind of formation at all. Just rush in. I mean, I think I'm just going to cast Protect in case they do retreat. Alright. Now then. Yeah, we're going to push forward. Actually, we're going to see how far the golems can move first. Right there. Alright. No. Yeah, that, that's a great example. I don't know if you all... The, the in-troops move being the first thing that's highlighted when you accidentally open the menu. That is a terrible idea. Absolutely atrocious. They should be ashamed of themselves. Alright. Okay, we got... Yeah, we got a pretty solid flank there. And we actually don't have nearly as much ranged as, uh... It's a very imbalanced group, is what I'm trying to say. Lots of melee, no support. That's what I'm saying. She she is solid in a fisticuffs fight. I don't know. I feel like it would be really nice if like the different classes had well in Brigandine it would be nice if the different classes had different kind of tags to give you an idea of exactly how they should be used at a glance if you're not familiar with the game. Like my game does. In any case. We are able to get in range to smack their lizard man, so we shall. Alright. Dragon. Can't get there. Imp. Only has enough MP for one protect. Well then. Alright. That's fine. Okay, and I mean, what is my hit chance here? 70%? 
All right. Smack him. All right. <laughs> are we gonna do it again? Yes, we are. Unicorn kill. That's always satisfying. Getting a getting a kill with your healer in melee. Always satisfying. Rarely a good idea, but always fun. Okay, so we can move there and there. He can actually move over here. I think I'm actually gonna do that. Just get in the middle of all of them and then buff my defense. Which now allows me to walk over here, smack him, or miss. That's fine. <laughs> that works too. Move over here and question mark. There we go. Got a good smack in there. Alright. Okay. That. I was trying to check his skill to see what range his ranged attack was. Uh, there needs to be a con I don't know why there's not a confirmation that you have to hit before you can end that before you can just stand by a unit. So here I'm going to hit and I'm going to run. All right. Move back. Actually move all the way over here. Cool. And is this a kill actually? Yes, it is. Beautiful. Alright. And she can move again. No, that would leave... That again... Nah, I'll just, I'll step back one. And then that lets me come in here with a power fist. Nice faint. So that means our doggo is not going to get counterattacked. And then we're going to fall back here. Big claw, smack. So close. Do we? Do we? <laughs> oh, I love it so much. It's just too fun. It's just too fun. Yeah, if you're if you're actually trying hard to like, you know, succeed in the game, usually going in melee with unicorns all the time is not a great idea. It's like I don't know. There's just something about it that's so satisfying. It's just so satisfying. I love it. I'm going to have to be so careful because sometimes I get ahead of myself and if I accidentally double click on the end turn thing, oof, that would be so unfortunate. Okay. Out of rune area. Oh well. Still get some experience. Yeah, nobody's in range. <laughs> Poor little in. Snick, Snick can do nothing. All right. So, Darian, don't you have like a super awesome terror impact? 303 damage. 
Okay, so that's a guaranteed kill on him. You know what else is a guaranteed kill on him? All the monsters. So, what if instead we do that? 61% there. Okay. If I move here, what about then? Ah, it's a pre-move, I can't. Okay. So I would have to get some- yeah, it's not gonna happen. Alright. Let's just- let's just end it then. That is such a strong hit. I like the Dark Knight class. That's fun. So how's chat doing right now? Everyone fine? I know this is very much second monitor content, but... Wow, we have, we have leveled up so much. Did they lower the required experience to level up in this game? It's like even dragons are leveling up so fast. Like in one battle, or two battles, we've gotten so many. Okay, this one's actually gonna be a minute, so I'm gonna refresh my coffee, take a bio break, and I'll be back for probably the last run of a couple hours. So, be back momentarily.
All right, and I'm back. So, yes, Taro, the <laughs> the point you just made is actually very, very accurate. It was accurate for Forsen, and I'm seeing it's very accurate here as well. Some units in this game, you get like one attack or one spell cast, and then they just sit there, and you hope you win to get the experience. So, yeah, good old Umimaru. <laughs> the little robot guy. I don't know if they ever actually explained how he is a thing in the in the lore of the game. But he's hilarious. Um, in any case, so just the one tweak of making damage and mana and resolve persist through combat into the overworld, and not having them, all, not having all the units full heal every battle made it so that lower cost units that are weaker are actually useful. Like, straight up from the beginning at level 1. They're useful. Because you can use them to swarm bigger uh, bigger units to grind down the resolve. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you can just have them swap out so that you always have fresh units compared to only having, you know, a 60 cost or higher rune cost unit and being able to use them less because they stay damaged between fights. So if you just keep putting, you know, dragons on the front line every battle, then over the course of a couple of turns you can actually get the dragon completely ground down to nothing. Whereas if you're constantly swapping out 20 costs, you can actually maintain a similar unit strength while, you know, not having to have them just hide behind everyone else. It's, it's one of the key things that I really focused on trying to figure out how to do, is make it so that it's not just, okay, stack as many dragons as you can and then win. Because that was a problem. That was a very serious problem with uh, Legend of Renersia. I mean, Re Legend of Forsena. You just... Stack dragons, and they just win. I'm actually gonna stick the mermaid on the flank if it dies, okay. I'm just gonna literally use it as a buffer to keep our dancer alive longer. Alright, so... Based on the Let's Plays I've watched during the, during the Switch days and during the PS4 days, Umamaru has a cannon of some kind that is incredibly dangerous, and Ginny there can one-shot people. He has a minus 40 double damage attack. He also has an AoE that, uh, that's pretty scary as well. So we're gonna have to be careful around Ginny there, we're gonna have to be careful around Umamaru with his Umemaru cannon. Yeah, also over 200 attack power. They really went crazy with a few of the special abilities for, in this game. I mean, I like it. It's not a bad thing. It's just different. Actually, he should probably be... there. Like that, I think. And then we can get our Lancer up to the front. And then starting next round, they should start coming towards me and I can start hitting Protect on everyone. That's the idea, anyway, in having all these imps just be able to hit everyone with Protect. Okay, here we're gonna have Hidden Away. Okay, they're moving over to the Castle Hex. Hi. And we've actually pivoted so hard that our left flank has fallen behind. That's not good. Okay, 
That's fine, though. Because we're still <laughs> two turns out from actually fighting. Also, I just realized we have absolutely, like, no support other than just heals and protect. <clears throat> like, we have no ranged fighting. We have no ranged battle is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hmm. Yeah, rocks are also not nearly as good at frontlining as they were in Forcina. Also, one of these is the Man of Miracle, right? Yeah, that one. We need to keep that one alive at all costs. I mean, do I just go for... Uh, all we have here is Hold, hold Ward. It makes no sense that the bishop has just Holy Word. Uh, okay. I think what we're gonna do... I really don't want him to fire off his Umimaru Cannon, though. Four Hex straight line. So he's probably gonna go for one of the two leaders. Hmm. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do here... Attack with the rock. Critical hit, nice. Only 72 damage, but still a nice critical hit. And then I'm going to heal... the rock. Okay. And I think I'm actually gonna hold my formation... right like that. Okay, faint, nice, beautiful. That was a little bit of a risky move because we would have taken more damage than we dealt, but... No, that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Alright. And here, once again, we have like nothing to actually support the damage on Mimaro, so he's definitely going to get his cannon off. And I don't know if Silent... Yeah, silenced units will be unable to use magic, specifically. Yeah, yeah. Jenny, if he hits, it's gonna hurt, yeah. I, I definitely figured that much out. Uh, on the bright side, so I think since, based on what I've seen, since the... Uh, Magic is the only thing affected by silence. That probably means that Protect is going to help reduce the damage from the Umamaru Cannon, since it's not magic. Which means we're in pretty good shape. Big Claw. Alright. Only 69 damage? Okay. And then we could use... oh, never mind. That's some good damage. 142. Nice. Okay. She took 67 damage back. You know what? That's worth the heal. And yeah, I'm also not gen I'm not going to try to min-max the uh, class changes in this playthrough. Actually, wait. We can move here which gives us a guaranteed hit on them. And then we can back back off, right? That's that's what the dogs can do? Yeah, that's what the doggos can do. Nice. Lucia. I know nothing about Lucia, actually. I have not paid enough attention to other Let's Plays to know. Like, uh, I guess she's unremarkable. Otherwise, I would know of her. Okay, yeah, so she's just another Temple Knight. Alright, Diana. Dual cross. Wait, she can't move again, right? No, she can't. Oops. <laughs> that was a mistake. Um. Okay. It's fine. 
we'll just move up to support her. I don't think they have any magic, actually. Temple Knight, Jenny, and then Umamaru. Yeah, so resist would probably be useless. Alright. Move there. That's silent. Protect. Nope. Can't. Can't reach. Oh well. We'll protect the Man of Rock. Alright. I mean, I could heal, but honestly, we're not hurt too bad right now, so I'm going to hold off. Ginny! Miss. Beautiful. Nice crit. He has a lot of health. 766. Uh, Nibblum. Did I turn down my mic gain a little? Your headphones feel like they're going to explode sometimes? Uh, actually I haven't, I haven't touched my mic. Are you saying you, you need me to because I'm too loud? I can absolutely do that. There, is that better? Here, we got right about, if I'm talking, this, this should be, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, um, so apparently whenever I'm streaming with OBS, it actually has different, like, the settings are different from whenever I record. So I've, I've just been using my recording settings because I tested it a little bit. And it was, like, weird, because my recording settings, whenever I'm recording playing Rogue Tech, if I lean forward, I get loud. But when I'm sitting back like I have been, it's really quiet. But then whenever I tested the stream, and I did the initial testing of it, it was, like, really quiet. And it was weird. So I, like, turned it up for the streaming. So I just, I put it back down a little bit, so hopefully that's a lot better for you. Yeah, 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 um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually using my phone to keep track of the chat because I only have one monitor. So like, every time I'm reading chat, I have to kind of like lean forward a little bit. I don't know, I, I think it, I think it's just the chat is what's messing with me really. I think that's the problem is whenever I lean forward to read the chat and I continue speaking, that's probably where the volume spikes at. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome. I'll just I'll try to make sure to not speak in an excited way while leaning forward. Oof! 200 damage to my poor little imp in the back. Critical hit on my dancer, alright. It's fine. And then another breath attack. That rock in the front's just tanking it though. So close to a counter kill there. 11 hit points and then he runs away. Of course he does. Alright, you know what? That kills the dog. Let's do it. Zap. Alright, kills the dog, does a little bit of damage to everyone else. And this is not a battle I care about winning. This is just a battle that I'm here for experience. So I'm going to try to lose as few units as possible, kill as much as possible, and probably actually retreat. Because I don't think I have the sustain to actually take down their, uh, their rune knights. Speaking of sustain... One hundred percent counterattack for 339 damage. 
Well then, not doing bad. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna heal the rock, so I'm going to use it to attack this serpent. Umamaru shouldn't have... Yeah, he doesn't have the mana to fire his cannon again. So that shouldn't be a concern. But I'm just trying to get as much experience as I can. Um, literally the only person on YouTube playing this. I'm tempted by the game-based movie. Okay, so I have to say, before I give you my honest my honest response to whether or not you should buy this game. I loved the original Brigandine, The Legend of Four Cinna back on the PlayStation 1 so much that back in, uh, you know, back, back six years ago in 2016, I wanted a sequel so bad that I started working on my own spiritual successor to the original Brigandine. And I've spent the last six years working on that project. So, I'm biased when I say Brigandine is an amazing game. And this game does have some improvements over The Legend of Forsena. So, I, I am enjoying it a lot. And the... The, the complaints I have so far about Legend of Renersia are minor and primarily just about how much exposition and story they tried to cram down your throat at the start of the campaign, which if you're just here for the gameplay, you can literally just skip. So if you're just, if you're just wanting a really good tactical hex-based conquest game, it's an amazing game and you can just skip all the story if you don't want to sit there and read through all the exposition. And right now, for the opening week, for the, the release week, it's 15% off. So I really do think that it's a good... It's a good game for the money right now. If you're expecting a challenging game that's going to give you hundreds and thousands of hours of entertainment... It's probably not, unless we're able to mod it to improve the AI, because I've been really just half-hearted playing it. I've, been, I've mostly been talking on tangents the entire time I've been playing the game so far, and I've still found a lot of success. I think I've lost one battle, and I'm only half paying attention to what I'm doing. So it's not going to be a challenging game, but it is very fun. Although, once again, I may be biased, so I, I just wanted to make sure that was completely clear. Okay, so as far as how many hours it has, the original Brigandine Legend of Forsina uses the same formula as this one. And I've been playing it for more than 20 years, and I still enjoy it. So does that does that answer your question? Like I I literally uh, on my on my Android phone I have a PlayStation emulator and I keep Brigandine Legend of Force in a on my phone so that anytime I'm like at a dentist or doctor's appointment or anything and sitting in the waiting room I play Brigandine Legend of Force. In a. And it's it's a very replayable game. There's a lot of customization to the different uh, the different leaders you have, the different knights that you're employing. You can play the same nation completely differently every single time. You could literally just change what knights you make into what classes every single time. You can change what monsters you use. Um, to make it more challenging, whenever I was playing the Brigandine Legend of Force in a game over and over and over again, I would do little challenges where I, you know, only use weak monsters or only use, you know, this type of champion, use no magic, no heals. Like, there's a lot of different ways you can make it harder for yourself to challenge yourself to, to really enjoy the game. But the AI is 
really dumb. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest complaint that anyone ever has about Brigandine Legend of Renercia specifically. The AI was actually better in the PlayStation 1 game. I mean, okay, so the, the problem, yeah, your, your question was that uh, the comments seem to say that it's a dumbed down, simplified form. That's not true at all. Um, so, the, the number of class options you have is increased. The number of customization for your different, you know, your, your different battle groups. Whether you have, you know, different units of different types. Whether you want to go with a flanking party or if you want to go with, you know, really heavy magic and support unit. That's just as versatile as Brigandine, Legend of Forsena, and Grand Edition, which Grand Edition was just a remake of Legend of Forsena. And it is really hard to say that it's a dumbed-down version of a series that only has one actual game so far. Um, yeah, no, no. Uh, Tales, Tales... I am of the opinion that Tales of Destiny is still the best Tales game and will always be the best Tales game. And I think it's been all downhill since then. <laughs> like, Tales is... <laughs> Tales is a different thing entirely. Um, but if, if they're specifically talking that the two things that I did notice is that the battlefield... Or not the battlefields. The, uh, the world map that you're playing on for, for the... The Brigandine Legend of Forsena, there was a lot more open field where there were like multiple castles that were each connected to several other castles, and there were very few paths on the original Legend of Forsena map where it was just a straight shot with like maybe at one point two that branch out and come back. So just when I get back to the world map, I'll actually show you exactly what I'm talking about. They did streamline the layout of the territories in such a way that it is easier to just push through and conquer entire areas. But that doesn't necessarily make it like dumbed down or easier. It just changes the dynamic because in this game, there are people and classes that have super powerful moves that can just one-shot monsters. So even though the path you're taking to conquer a ter uh, to, to conquer a nation is more streamlined, it's just as dangerous as it was in Force of Yeah, actually, I just got done buying Vesperia and Berseria on Steam. I'm looking forward to playing through them all the way. Uh, I've only dabbled in them before. Tales is a great series. I mean, even the even the bad Tales games are still fun. They're, they're maybe not great, but they're still fun. But then again, I'm also a game dev, so, like, I enjoy just picking apart how a game works sometimes. Um, okay, turn... Yeah, Team C is going to be after their Team C. Their Team C does not have any way to kill my rock here. Good. Now... Maybe I do focus Umi. I definitely go here. Or actually... Yeah, no, I definitely go there. So, Umimaru, 76% to do 72 damage. You know what, this might bait out a heal on the healer. Or on the unicorn. Oh yeah, Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile, very much, very much fun. Like, there's there's a lot of game series that I just, I really enjoy. Um, like, I know for some it might be blasphemy, but I actually play Fire Emblem on easier difficulties. Just because I don't have the time to really, like, push myself to master the game. Uh, no breaths can reach me? Yeah, no breaths can reach me there. Uh, so, like, I... I could take the time to, you know, min-max out and do all the stuff and 
I just, I try to play a more just enjoyable... Oh, that's right, Umaru Cannon's out of charge. Okay. Um, what am I trying to say? I, I play some games on easier modes just to get through them quicker. But, yeah, the... The Fire Emblem is an example of a game where I like I find it challenging on the normal difficulty, and I don't feel like I need to push it up anymore. But that option's there for people who really want a hardcore challenge, and I think that is just good game design. So I really hope, I really hope whenever I release my game, that I'll be able to have developed a good enough AI that people who want a slight challenge can get it while people who want a hardcore challenge can also get it. Actually, I'm just going to try to silence the unicorn. I can't do anything else with this amp, so might as well. Oh man, I grew up on the NES and the Atari, and like, back then when I was a kid, and I actually had the ability to spin, you know, like, entire days just trying to get past one level of Mega Man or Mega Man 2 or whatever. Like, or Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Oh man. I, I still remember some of the stuff in Who Framed Roger Rabbit was so difficult. Of course, then again, I was a kid, so maybe it's not as hard as I thought it was. But just the fact that I had the time to put in and do it was the reason why that wasn't a problem. If I were to go back now and try to play some of the NES games that I absolutely loved as a kid, I just, I wouldn't be able to get good enough at them to be able to fully enjoy them. And so like whenever, whenever people are talking about, you know, games of all time that they recommend, I have a hard time recommending like older, like PlayStation games and stuff. I mean, not PlayStation. I, I have a hard time recommending games that came before like the PlayStation, because that was really, in my opinion, that, that was whenever a lot of games shifted to be more approachable to a wider audience, rather than just, hey, you paid us, you know, the price of the game, you expect to bash your face against the same challenges for the next 200 hours, or whatever. Yep, yep. Uh, Atari, NES, and then I had a friend down the street who had an SNES, and that blew my mind, because there were six buttons instead of just two. <laughs> and then PlayStation came along and everyone was so amazed, look at all the 3D characters! <laughs> oh man, good times. Good times. I think I'm actually gonna push aggressively here to try to kill this unicorn. Ah, so close. So no. Um, I mean, I don't think I have a way to save the doggo. It's only a level 4, though. I'm just trying to figure out now how I can get a kill here. I definitely need to heal this rock so that it doesn't die. Okay. Oh, yes, the, the monsters, it's permadeath. Uh, the, there is an item you can get from questing that will let you revive a monster you've lost somewhere along the way. But the monsters, if they hit zero hit points, they are permanently dead. The heroes, the, the leaders, if they hit zero hit points, they're wounded, which means they can't move or attack on the overworld for the next round. And every monster they have has a chance of being left behind on the battlefield so that whoever wins the battle claims the monsters that are there. Oh yeah, no, I love permadeath. Uh, my, some of my favorite games are permadeath, like Darkest Dungeon, Erratus Lord of the Dead, love them. Brigandine, love it. XCOM, love it. Like, it just, it adds so much more. And of course, Rogue Tech, if, if anyone's, you know, actually subbed to the channel for Rogue Tech, you know, I really love Rogue Tech, and part of it is the permanence. If you make a tactical error and you, you know, lose a unit and it's an important unit, you might be in trouble. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to hold the line here and hit Umar with Venom. Oh, Tactics Ogre, yes! Although, Tactics Ogre, the, the thing that kind of like 
bugged me a little bit about Tact Tactics Ogre was just the whole tarot card system was really hard to, like, get my mind around for some reason. It was just like, why is this so complex? It doesn't need to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 no. Tactics Ogre was... Yeah, Tactics Ogre was the sequel. Yeah, no, I, I was talking about um, Ogre Battle. Yes. Ogre Battle. The thing that messed me up so bad was the tarot. Like, it, it was... It was a great example of adding complexity without adding depth. So, if that makes sense, the... The general idea of just, like, all these things that have impact, but it's very convoluted. I really wish Spellbreak, like, made them more vulnerable to magic rather than just dispelling buffs and debuffs. What if we give Flight to... I already have flight. Uh... Doggo. Maybe it'll help him evade better. Oh yeah, no, the music was amazing in Ogre Battle, but I just I couldn't get past the tarot card thing. Like it messed with me so much. <laughs> okay, that I'm pretty sure that would have killed if it hit. I'm so glad that missed. It looked cool, though. That was a really good animation. Oh boy. Okay, he went for my support unit instead of my... or instead of my leader. Hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling like I'm definitely not going to be able to win this battle. Which is fine. He can get MP back. Uh-oh. Oh, dude, just all the Mega Man games. All of them. Rockman, Mega Man. They're so good. Oh, okay. With my rose-tinted glasses, they are so good. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure if I went back and tried to play them now, they would be incredibly frustrating to deal with, because I remember all of the... the one-pixel jumps that, like, you had to land on that one specific pixel or you just died. Uh, actually, I don't know. I do not know. Um, I'm running it on high graphics with, uh, 1920 by 1080 but I have it, I have my recording software set to 30 frames per second, because with my testing that I've done, uh, I drop a few frames here and there with 60 frames per second, just because my internet connection isn't the best. It's not like I have, you know, Google Fiber or anything. So, just to make sure that the the video was as smooth as possible, without having to drop down to 720p, I just went to 30 frame, uh, to a 30 frame per second lock. And honestly, my eyes aren't good enough to tell the difference between 60 frames per second and 30 frame per frames per second in a tactical game. I absolutely notice whenever the frame rate drops in Elden Ring. Whenever, you know, two frames of animation can actually mean the difference between you rolling in time or not, but... As far as, you know, in a tactical game, it's all just kind of noise to me. I, my brain interprets it differently, if that makes any sense. Yeah, honestly, I don't know who could possibly watch, but apparently you're able to stream on, uh, on YouTube video 60 frames per second at 4K, if you have the internet connection for it. And immediately my first question was, but why? <laughs> like, who, who has a good enough internet connection to watch somebody play something 4K at 60 frames per second? That's crazy.
Yeah, I know. Like, it's just like, why? That's that's really the bottom line. Every time I'm just like, looking at the specs that are available to streaming services and just going, I don't, I don't see why, I don't know how this is a thing. Oh man, he's at 81%. If he ever hits, that's a kill. I already attacked with my leader though, so I can't just fail. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. Okay. That way, they no longer have the, uh, the encasement or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, actually, the stream you're watching right now is a 3500 bit rate because that's the best my internet could handle. <laughs> Oh, I was just like, yeah, there's there's no way I, I mean, I could technically, um, but it's unreliable. The, the fluctuations would kill it. 89%. Let's go. But yeah, like just dropping frames because the internet decided to slag out. I've, I've noticed cable internet isn't as bad when you have a house. Because uh, back when I had a house, I had cable internet that just was constantly amazing. Super fast, upload and download all the time. But after moving back into an apartment, my upload speed varies so much. Like sometimes it'll be 10 megabits per second, and sometimes it'll be three and a half. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I, I really feel like it's just like how many people are currently on the internet in the apartment complex. That's, that's all it feels like, really. Okay. I have an elemental advantage, but not much of one, because I only have one spear and he has five. That being said, if he swings at anyone, I would definitely rather it be my Temple Knight. Actually, while we're at it, Doggo needs to run. Before I forget. <laughs> But there's no chance of us actually killing, right? He has a 59% chance to do 174 damage when he's at an elemental disadvantage. Wow. Come on, miss. Oof. That hurts. Oh yeah, no, like, the, the bit rates for 4K streaming is stupid. And I don't know why anyone would ever, like, actually try to commit to that. Plus, I'm not really sure, like, I mean, if you're watching, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm biased because almost every time I watch a stream, it's always on my phone instead of on my computer. But, like, I don't, I don't see how people could really enjoy watching somebody else play a game at 4K. Even if it's a pretty game, like, I don't know. I, I, I also do the second monitor thing a lot. Or, you know, what, what people refer to as the second monitor streaming is where, I, where I'm doing something else and I have the stream on, on my phone at my side while I'm doing dishes or making food or working on my game or whatever. So, yeah, it just it seems weird to me, the concept of somebody streaming at 4K. And honestly, I mean, I'm of the opinion that 4K isn't really worth it unless you're running a, you know, running a, a screen that's like 60 plus inches, just because the pixels are, like, I don't know, just resolution is, is weird, and people think that higher resolution is better, but the, the increase in detail is so marginal on a smaller screen that it's really not worth it. Sure, all I can do is silence, so might as well try to get some experience for it. I just realized I have, like, nothing in front. Sacrificial Lamb? Actually, he still has some MP. 
He can still cast Protect. Um, there we go. Cool. Oh yeah, no, like... <laughs> I didn't mean to get off on an entire tangent of like 4K versus 1080, but... Yeah, 1080p, so... Whenever I'm whenever I'm doing art specifically, and like I'm in Photoshop and I start up a 4K file, if I just zoom out to full screen, the number of pixels that I can like the, the number of pixels in width that I can actually discern is not significantly higher than whenever it's 1080p and I'm just working on smaller brushes. It's so very, very similar. It's like, yeah, sure, I've heard the stories of like being able to see pores on actors' faces and stuff, but like that that's that's like uh whenever you're running like a projector setup and Hey, they're taking the bait. Cool. Yes. Kill the mermaid. Thank you. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Higher, resol higher resolution is useful for zooming in, but if you can zoom in, then all you need to do is like zoom in less. <laughs> if that makes if that makes sense, if I'm communicating that properly, like in my mind, it's just like if if you're working at higher resolutions, it makes you have to zoom in more. Whereas, working on lower resolutions, you can just zoom in less. But, uh, I definitely, I kicked up the resolution for my game's world map by a lot. By a massive factor. Just because I initially did a single 4K image for the world map. And then I implemented it in my vertical slice. And when I zoomed in, it got pixelated. And I was like, oh, okay. It's really, really pixelated. This isn't just, like, acceptable. This is terrible. So, yeah. <clears throat> That's why the new map is, uh, 6x8, 4K. It's a grid. <clears throat> Jeez. Let me get a sip here. <clears throat> That's better. Yeah, it's a 6x8 it's a grid of 4K images now. And now... Hopefully, when you zoom in all the way, it won't be super pixelated. There's a chance it'll still be a little pixelated, but hopefully not bad enough that anyone cares. Okay. Obviously, smack him, because he can't counterattack since he's paralyzed. So, free experience. Cool. Do I bail here? So Jenny's gonna get a turn, then Umi's gonna get a turn. So this Team C, I don't have to worry about at all. I'm gonna pop a heal on Rock. Okay. I can silence. I can try to silence for some experience. It's fine. Cool. Silence, free experience. Okay. And I am gonna retreat here. That's everyone, right? Yeah. Alright. Okay, here actually I can show you the what I was talking about here. So you can see, I'll actually get my mouse over here. You can see all the paths on the map, right? So, this stretch through here, it's basically too wide. So all you really need is two teams of three to push through here continuously until they're all conquered. There's never a point where you need more than two teams of three to conquer this entire stretch. Through here, you only need one team of three to conquer all of this. Through here, you only need two teams of three. And only whenever it splits off like that. So you could just leave one defender and push through the rest. Like, the majority of this map is made up of one or two wide pathways. 
So the only thing you ever need when you're fighting on a single front is like two armies. Whereas Legend of Forsena had several places throughout the map where if you didn't have at least nine knights, you just couldn't push through that area. Specifically through the most most of the center of the map. was It was a lot of areas where there were three or more territories connected to each other where you, if you pushed through, you just had to be, you know, split to be able to keep it all under control. So that is the only way in which this game is dumbed down at all, to answer the previous question. Other than that, in every way, it's a little bit more... Well, in every way except for the AI. It's, it's more developed, it's got more features. It's just the AI is the one... The AI and the world map are the are the two things that could be said to be weaker than Legend of Force and Everything else from what I've seen is an improvement. Yeah, no, exactly. Like it's it's just an opinion thing. If somebody says this game is a dumbed down version of Le uh, Legend of Force and they're just they just opinion don't like it. They don't like the changes. That's it. <clears throat> So yeah, I'm gonna retreat with this team. Okay, so that saves them. All we lost there is a mermaid. Let's see if we can get through the rest of these retreats without losing anyone else. Oof. Uh-oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. But it wasn't the Mana Miracle, so it's okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Okay. It, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. As long as they don't kill the doggo, I'm happy. <laughs> the doggo is definitely more valuable than the imps. Okay. Uh, how much experience can I get here? I can move... Here, punch him. Okay. Yeah, he counterattacks, that's fine. I can move here, claw him. Beautiful. Okay, here's actually a thought. No, never mind. We, we are going back to back, so we can just retreat now safely. Beautiful. Alright. And then finally... Here, can we kill this demon? Okay, first up. Doggo. How much damage will you take? You will only take 73, so you can get a hit in. Okay, so how do we do this then? Entrapment, or encasement, or whatever it's called. Beautiful. I want to get another Hellhound, honestly, because the hidden, hidden away, the ability to strike and move, is so good. Although, actually, I probably should have tried to get the kill with the Mana Miracle. That would have made more sense. So now, get in here with her. Put the unicorn there. So now it's down to 82. Uh, how low did we need to get it to kill with the doggo? We need to get it to... <laughs> 81. One hit point. You know what? That's rough. That's so rough. We can't get the kill. The magic pixel. Unless it's a crit. Nope, not a crit. We have hidden away. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I definitely- I should have intentionally tried to get the kill with the Mana Miracle. But... <laughs> Alright. I'll take it. A kill's a kill. Missables? 
Um, miss, are I, I don't. What, what do you? What exactly do you mean by missables? Are there missables in this game? Do you mean like attacks that can miss or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure what you mean by missables. In any case, that's only the second defeat out of all the battles we've fought. Not too bad. Um, not to my knowledge. Uh, to... As far as I understand it, there's nothing that you can miss... If you, okay, so one thing is if you conquer a nation, some of those knights will join you, some of them will join your other knight, or will, will join the other nations. And I think that's largely chance based, but by the time you finish conquering all of the nations for the entire continent, you end up recruiting all of the knights you could have, from what I understand. Um, but as far as, like, a specific thing happening that if you don't do it at a certain time, you can never do it, I don't think that's a thing. I can't say for sure, because this is literally my first time playing Legend of Renarcia, but I can say for a fact that if you if you played Forsena, the, the original Brigandine, there was never a thing that you couldn't just quest for later. Um, and plus, most of the things in this game are just... Monsters and items. Uh, as far as story stuff goes, I really don't know if there's anything missable. Um, I know that if you, like, try... Yeah, you just purchased it. It's a good game. Like, it's fun. See, a lot of people have their own gauges of whether or not a game is worth the money. Mine's very simple. Is it fun? If so, I'm happy. <laughs> like, I don't need to be challenged by every game. Now, yes, if a game is challenging and balanced and really compelling and deep, I will I will be willing to put hundreds of hours into it. Whereas if it's fun but not very deep, I'll probably only put in a couple dozen hours at most. Um, or if, if the game is largely story-driven, and I just don't like the story, I'll play for sometimes two or three hours and then be like, eh, nah. But as far as like tactical games go, I've, I've never played a tactical game or a strategy game that I've just been like, this is, you know, this is not fun in any way. I can't even see what they were going for. Like there's always been something interesting to glean from it. Um. Yeah. And I have no idea what's going on with the storyline because I like completely zoned out for the majority of the exposition at the beginning. It, it was like literally exposition after exposition after exposition, so my brain turned off. But apparently these people with the with the like fin ears, the elf or fish ears or whatever. Uh, have some kind of something wrong with them that they have to take medicine for or something. And they have to wear masks when they're in presence of people who aren't part of this race. So it's a, it's a whole, like, fast racist kind of thing. Not sure, like, what's going on because I zoned out from so much of the introduction. But, yeah. It hasn't felt too heavy-handed yet, but it has very much had a few moments of, like, very obvious, this is racism. So... Oh, here we go. They were abducted and brought to Gimel as the nation I'm playing as, while still in their boy's Barrett form. As they shared the same living quarters, they had lived their lives up to their adult forms, treating one another like brother and sister. But the always reserved Darian only stared at a lone proclamation. Ne, ne. 
衛生隊においては何人も病心に Okay, so Eliza is the,、uh, the leader of the nation that we're playing as, and apparently she's put forth a proclamation allowing these people, who are kind of like undesirables in this culture,、uh, to become equals by stepping up and being commanders. Okay. Although it's weird that they're talking about joining. Since they're already part of my army, unless this was like a flashback. Okay, see, this is exact, exactly what I was talking about. We just got done with this whole backstory of the two characters, and now it's going to go into more exposition about this group. And, like, I just want to get back to the game. <laughs> I, yes, I appreciated that one little backstory of the, two di、uh, of the two commanders in my army. That was cool. I was fine with that. But I don't need to know about how they are able to grow from baby to boy to adult or whatever. Special fighting unit, yeah, they've already made you know, mention of that. Blackbirds, skillful knights, yeah, this is like the third time they're saying it, maybe fourth. Brought up in orphanages, training, blah blah blah. Okay. When outside their dormitory, they're. They are really beating us in the face with this they have to wear masks thing. Okay. But the mask doesn't even. Like. The mask covers less than Batman's. Whatever. Back to the actual game. Alright, so. <laughs> Back in the old days. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um. Dude, you know what's funny is I just saw that you mentioned Unlimited Saga. I actually liked Unlimited Saga, it was not a good game. Like, I will, I will be the first to say it was not a good game. But it was interesting. They did things that nobody before nor since have done. So it was really interesting to me to see these weird little quirks of a game that, if put together better, might have actually been a really fun experience. In any case, so this is like. In my opinion, the meat and potatoes of Brigandine. You get hero, or you, you get monsters, like here we captured this level 8 angel. We have certain amounts of rune power per night. So if we want to keep this level 8 angel, we need to find a way to fit 85 into our teams. You can see on the right of each, or of, each of the The rows. We have 33 left here, 40 left here, and 19 left here. In addition to wanting to fit the angel that costs 85, we also are able to level up our centaur, both golems, and our demon. And leveling up a monster once it hits level 10 makes it cost more rune power. So we could, at this point, level up this golem into an iron golem. It would gain attack, strength, defense, health, mobility, and it would actually gain more stats per level. It would have higher growth rates. However, where is the cost? I'm. There it is, magic cost. 45 becomes 55. So it would take 10 extra rune power to have the iron golem instead of the bronze golem. If we do that, there's no way we can fit this angel. However, if we take. Oops, I'm in the class unit. If we take this unicorn and put it here, and then we take this centaur and put him here, we can now fit the angel we captured into Eliza's team.
So, in addition to customizing all of your, well, everyone except for your, your nation's leader doesn't change. They have one class unless you accomplish certain things accor according to, you know, which character it is. But every other character on your, you know, well, I say every other. In Force it was every other, but in this game there might be a few others that have unique classes. But this wizard, for example, right now he has three proficiency as a wizard. So, um, because he's a wizard... Actually, I'll start with uh, a lower level character. Here we go, Enchantress Sugar. So, she has just achieved, at level 6, proficiency 5 as an Enchantress. As an Enchantress, her basic skills were Light Spank, and her magic was Frost Charm and Flight. But, you'll notice the medals on the side of Frost Charm and Flight? Now that she has reached proficiency 5, those three spells will be in her spell list for the rest of the game, no matter what class she is. So, I can now change her into a bard, which will give her a change to stats. We'll also give her light swing and brave play instead of light spank. And we'll add protect and silent to the spells she can cast. Once she gets five levels of bard, she will then forever have Protect, Silent, Frost, Charm, and Flight, no matter what class I change her to. And I've always thought that was a really cool system. Oh yeah, no, you, you can... If you want to min-max, you can absolutely change some classes together that have crazy combinations. For this playthrough, I'm literally just messing around, doing whatever I feel like, and seeing what happens. But you can actually go in and really plan out, like, this is going to be with this character's base growths. Because every character, as far as I understand it, has their own growths as well, in addition to the class growths. So you can go in and, like, go, okay, for this character, I'm going to go five levels of this, five levels of that, five levels of this, five levels of that, and then end with this class. And have the strongest possible of that character you can. And it's, it's actually very much, um, it's very much encouraged in challenge mode, which is like a, so after you beat the base game, the, the storyline with all the story stuff, there's challenge mode where you just play the game without the story mode. Um, and that starts all of your nights at level one, along with some other changes to the formula. Uh, it's kind of... I don't know. The The fact that they call it challenge mode is a little misleading because as far as I can tell, it's not really that much more challenging than just playing the normal campaign. But I don't know. I haven't actually done it myself. Maybe it's just because I was watching people play it that were really good at the game. <laughs> Maybe once I try challenge mode, I'm going to be like, oh wow, this is actually a challenge. But uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoy the characters class changes that can customize. And also some monsters, like unicorns, for example, you can either turn them into a pegasus, which gives them flying, or a nightmare, which gives them, uh, instead of flying, it just gives them alternate spells. So they get weakness and magic down instead of, uh, and bonus stats compared to the pegasus. You'll, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll notice the nightmare just across the board has better stats. Which is really weird, in my opinion, because flying isn't that great compared to just, you know, having higher stats. So most people agree that just there's no reason to have a Pegasus over a Nightmare unless you happen to capture one, like I did. <laughs> oh yeah, Valkos does make everything look easy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I was trying to say, Tara, uh, is that the, the different classes have their own growth rates. So if you want to have like the highest strength possible, then I'm fairly sure that if you go um, Barbarian just straight through, just Barbarian into Berserker into Viking, I think that's like the highest strength you can get in the game. So there is a benefit to not cross-classing. Very much with, like, Dungeons and Dragons, for example.
like in Dungeons and Dragons, if you just stay barbarian straight through the entire character, you end up being a much better barbarian than anyone else could be if they changed to any other class. But you lose some of the versatility of having taken a couple levels in fighter or whatever. It's just, it's a very, it's a well-designed system. Uh, my... I like Pathfinder, so don't get me wrong here. I do like Pathfinder, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do this real quick while I talk about uh, Pathfinder versus Dungeons and Dragons. So, if, if you're familiar with the history of Pathfinder, what basically happened is Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 was very popular, very successful. Then 4th edition was announced. A lot of people really disagreed with the changes Wiz the Wizards of the Coast was making to the formula of Dungeons & Dragons. So a lot of them that were entrepreneurial split off to start Pathfinder which is very much based on D&D 3.5. Um, it's very similar in a lot of ways. It did clean up a few more complicated systems in 3.5, but one of the, the key things that they did was made sure that at every level of every class you got something, so there were no dead levels, so to speak. <coughs> Excuse me. And they also kind of tried to make it more streamlined so that things went a little faster in combat. And I I love Pathfinder. If, if given the option to play Pathfinder or 4th or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, I would choose Pathfinder over 4th or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. But 3.5 is always going to be my jam, just because I really enjoy the complexity and the depth that that complexity can add for a group that knows really well how to play 3.5 and is very comfortable with that complexity. So we have a level 1 here that is currently a bard. Uh, 130 MP. Single ally unit. This is... She can either be a bard. I think I'd rather be an enchantress, actually. Uh, but her int's only 64. Uh. So she'd have frost then. I think I will. She's not going to be the most effective bard. I mean, not the most effective sorceress, but. Then again, did did bard have an offensive? No, it's just protect and silent. Yeah. At level 1, getting a kill on just about anything with Frost will give me several levels, so... That's the reason for the change there. Enchantress Thief, yep. That's a fun party, I should definitely use them. Oh, let's see, what time is it? Oh, it's only 1? Excellent. Beautiful. Alright, so here... Did we have anyone to class up? Nope. Nope. Yes. Although I really like her as a dancer, she's... I mean, a hunter... That's ranged. Accuracy up. I think I'd actually rather her be a lancer. I really like Lancers. Wait, what? Lancers don't have a ranged attack. Although, never misses. That sounds really good. I don't care. I'm gonna make her a Lancer. <laughs> I like Lancers. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm right now I'm in Texas. I was living in New York for a couple of years, but I'm, I'm Texas now. Um, looking forward to moving back north. It's hot down here. So very, very hot. 
Uh, but yeah, my, my goal is to stop at around 3 to have lunch, and then after a couple hours break, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna try modding the game by just digging through the files and seeing what I can do with it. So I think this is probably gonna be the last round, so I'm gonna summon some more stuff. I do like rocks. Even though they're squishier, I like the maneuverability. And... Once again, rock here. I think, actually... I'm gonna take this team. I'm gonna move them here. And then I'm gonna take this team and move them here. So that I can do exactly what I was talking about and just push that team all the way through the island nation. Right? I think so. And here we go. We have a rock that can turn into either a phoenix, which gains fire elements and can heal in a giant AoE, as well as recovering hit points every turn. Or it can turn into a Simurg. Thirty-three percent chance to inflict faint. So no more petrify. Okay. And get to dominate mountain S. Has less hit points. Less MP, but higher mobility. Oh, less defense as well. Same cost, though, so we need 25 points. We need to move things around so we have 25 points here. Uh, let's see. So we can get 95. We do this. And then... Here we can go 90. Yeah, no problem, Nibbling. Uh, like I said, I'll be streaming again after 3. And, uh, or not after 3, after a few hours from 3. I'll also be streaming again probably tomorrow and the next day and maybe even the day after that. We'll see, how, we'll see how it goes, but I'm planning on marathoning this entire playthrough. So, feel free to stop back by. Thanks for coming by, and have a good one. Alright, now then. Back to Tetris. <laughs> Alright, so... We need to get... We need to get 25. This is always tricky. Alright, so I can get... Actually... There we go. That does it. Alright! Phoenix! Boom! And yeah, I haven't really done the questing thing yet. In part because I don't have that many spare knights. Uh, also, in part, because I just I don't feel like taking the time to figure out the system yet. I'm probably going to mess with it a little bit between streams and then do it once I come back after lunch. Alright, so that's ready to go. This is ready to go because we're going to capture this one. And then next round, we'll have a higher combat, combat power so we can just attack that one and win, or, you know, get the get the advantage so they can't attack the open castle. Which is silly. That's, that's very silly. It's one of the things I fixed with my game. Uh, if multiple people attack different directions, there's actually a battlefield for in between every territory in my game. So, if two people attack each other, they actually meet in the middle so that, you know, neither person advances on without defeating the other force that run, runs into them. 
And if multiple people attack the same castle from different directions, they all take part in the battle at the same time. So instead of battles just being 1v1, they can be literal free-for-alls with everyone from every direction. It's fun. But I think that's all for that. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly as intended. So we moved here, we moved here, we can't attack with them. However, we will attack here with everyone to there. And we'll go ahead and attack here with everyone to here. So even though only three people can take part in the fight, we can still push just like Risk rules. You can only roll three dice at a time, but you can move all of the troops you want after. And I think I'm going to just do those two battles and then call it for this stream. Again! Alright, Shinobi Tribe. I'm still shocked that there's eight of you. <laughs> I'm shocked and flattered. I, I really do appreciate it. The fact that eight people are sitting here hanging out with me while I play a game. Blows my mind. Oh, this is gonna be quick. This is gonna be quick and easy. <laughs> Why is there a child here? <laughs> She looks like a child herself. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's hilarious. Hot calling the kettle black, man. You know, it's funny, she's talking about casting spells and I turned her into a bard. <laughs> Alright, so... Here we go, pushing... As hard as we can. Just because it takes so long to finally get into the fight. Almost, I thought I had sneezed there for a second. I was like getting ready to duck away from the mic and it just didn't come out. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so we got probably what, three turns before we get there? At least so far, I have not seen them do the thing that was, uh, like the AI would always do in Legend of Forsuna where they just like wait for you to get almost to them then all retreat without fighting that always irritated me <laughs> like if you're gonna just retreat before the battle starts please do it immediately but i have not seen that yet i have seen them stick around when they shouldn't because it's definitely over but better than them trolling and just waiting till you spend five minutes walk walking towards them before retreating. Alright. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Oh boy. This is taking a minute. Yeah, golems are slow. I know Iron Golems apparently gain an extra hex of movement, but I just I didn't have the ability to use them. I did not have the uh, enough room power to modify them into Iron Golems. 
I definitely need to group up with a couple other knights to like trade stuff around so I can actually level up the the people that have the ability to level up, especially once the knight and demon are both able to level up. Because an archangel and an arc demon together, very strong. Very strong. You know, I actually shouldn't be so hasty because they actually do have some strength to them. But then again, we have them outnumbered so heavily. I don't think I have to try hard. I think I can be reckless and it's fine. I definitely, I definitely intend to move that siren or the the mermaid away from this team. Absolutely. All right. We got golems. We got an archer. And the mage. And then the healer's taking up the rear. With the random elemental to the side. This... this is the worst part of the game. Actually, ooh! So there's actually a chance. Whenever I'm digging through the files, if there's a place that I can find that specifies which hex the different units spawn in, I could actually move the spawn locations closer to each other, or, or the attack locations closer to the castle, which would obviously mean less turns spent just trying to get to the castle. Go ahead and cast the spell I can while I can. I'm really excited to come back from lunch and dig around through some files. That's gonna be fun. I forget, is this actually like a melee class at all? No, this is a buff class. Alright. Then again, I could just cast Frost and do damage. Although, I guess that's poor distribution of XP, because I could have buffed and gotten more XP out of it. Eh, whatever. Heal. Out of range of the heal for the lizard man. Unfortunate. Alright. So we've got Mua now. That would probably just. Yeah. Probably just Rex her. That's a nice water element, or fire, earth element too. Fire, fire into water, does a lot of damage. For some reason I was thinking she was actually uh, nature, or green. Instead of, you know, green, or instead of being blue, like she actually is. Whoops. Alright, 77 hit points left. I'm not going to be disrespectful and try to finish her off with <laughs> unicorns. I, I will leave her for our ruler to get an easy kill and lots of XP from it. Alright. 
Yep. 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 Beautiful. All right. Okay, she got one level. That's fine. I'm happy with one level. Get our dragon up to the front. Go ahead and cast Protect on the Lizard Man, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Just try to get experience. Actually, go ahead and cast Halo on... The Angel. Try to get to level 10 sooner. We actually can get in and attack. Okay, so angels cannot be frontliners nearly as well as they could in Forsena. Noted. Noted. But... The angel should be able to survive long enough to cast an amazing spell next turn. I'm actually going to... Yeah. I can move and then buff. No, there's nobody I want to buff. I'm just going to smack and move. For 49 damage. Okay, this is not a class I can actually melee with. Got it. Noted. Lesson learned. This is actually going to get a counter attack. That's fine. Yep. I don't mind trading damage there. Out of range of healing. That's unfortunate. Get in here so I can actually do something about it. Yep. Demon, get it ready. Okay. We're actually in a little bit of trouble if we can't distract the main forces. We have overexposed ourselves in the flank. No, actually, I... I want to draw. I want to draw attention of these guys. So we're gonna start off hitting their level a uh, level one ghoul. I thought he was uh, the leveled up kind, but he's not. Not at all. All right, elemental. Is it three or is it two? I forget. Yep, beautiful. Zap. Alright. Now then. Unicorns, just, just advance. Get in position to heal people, especially on the right flank. Alright. Now, dragon. Dragon slow. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I could always just, you know, protect the mermaid and send it into its death. Okay, magic, divine ray. So close. I mean, we could take a very slight detour here, but I think I'd rather actually push forward and draw their attention. The less of them that can hit my angel, the less likely it is the angel dies. Alright, heal, beautiful. Dragon, taking the bait. Crit for 68. Man, Lizardmen do not mess around in this one. Uh-oh. That was close. 
That was so close. Yeah, if the AR was smarter... Uh-oh. <clears throat> I'm gonna... I'm gonna change her class back, I think. <laughs> Maybe I just used it wrong, but, uh... That's a level 12 centaur that's on the line now. Oof. to get the kill with. I think I want to get the kill with the unicorn. Just to continue the theme and the disrespect. Okay. Fine. Fine. I'll get the kill with the centaur. Jeez. That was so bad. I mean, yeah, I definitely used it wrong because I, for some reason, thought it was like a melee buff class instead of just a full support class. That's unnecessary. That's unnecessary. Sure. Oosh. He's dead. Go ahead and cast heal on the angel. Go ahead and get the free hit on the boss on Talia. Yep, only a matter of time now before we win. Ooh, do, do I focus the level seven or the level six? I think I focus the one that can paralyze with the things that can't be paralyzed. Okay. They're so slow. <laughs> They're so slow. Uh, and apparently she can't be paralyzed because of her brigandine. That's not as much damage as I was hoping. How about you? How much damage do you do? Gonna, you're gonna go fight the dragon. Smack! I really like that animation. It, it's just simple and clean, just... Big dragon goes smack. Nice crit! 220. Cool. And a missed boot. Go ahead and protect on... He already has protect. So I guess protect on him. I mean... This is definitely a kill. If we, if we Divine Ray and then hit with the Lizard Man, that's definitely a kill. I would rather the Angel get the kill, and I'd rather... I'm willing to take the counterattack damage to get the kill on him. Okay. Alright. Yeah. There we go. Alright. Cool. Yeah. And now we can get an Archangel. Oh yeah. Uh, go ahead and pop a heal on the Lizard Man. Just to make sure no shenanigans happen. Alright, Talia. What's she gonna do? 106 damage. Okay. Respectable. 128 damage. Okay. Very respectable. Is this just a matter of... Yeah. Goodbye. Easy. Easy. 
heal angel. Yep. If we can get the angel fully healed, we know that it can just stand there. Because it survived both attacks last turn. Go ahead and hit Talia with a little range attack. Beautiful. And end that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll move out of the rune area to do it. Got a hit there. Cool. And then Eliza. We Yeah, we got no mana left for just about anything there. No mana left here either, except for as a loop heal. I mean, there's actually the very serious danger. Okay, so he's able to do 112. She only does 94. We should be golden. Do that. Nice. We go in like that. I think. Nice crit. One more hit. One more hit and she's down. Really? Okay, she's at least smart enough to run away. <laughs> if she didn't run there, then yeah, I would have had absolutely zero faith in the AI. But yeah, so far, easy clap. I'm curious if the if the wounded knight had to go back to the castle that they came from. Or if the Wounded Knight stays with the attacking group. That would be very curious. Hey, Lan. <clears throat> Appreciate you joining. Yeah, we're, we're having a fun time while I spend half the time kind of focusing on the game a little bit, and then the other half the time just going on tangents and having a good time. They actually have a lot of monsters, but a lot of very weak looking monsters. Yeah, I think we're gonna do this one last battle, and then probably call it. Definitely a good time for food, but I'll finish this first. So we definitely want to drop Conrad here. I'm curious to try Marcosius now that he's a thief. And then I definitely want a mage. Or would I rather have three dragons? <laughs> no, I'll take a mage. Alright, here we go. Yeah, they have a lot of monsters, but not terribly challenging. I'm feeling confident just because we've only had two gate or two battles dropped, and they were both battles that I intentionally was just going into to try to get some experience. So I'm confident, but confidence is a slow and insidious killer. All right. I guess we'll start out the good old fashioned walk forward slowly. Oh, that's right, he's a mage that can front line. 
Eh. Maybe not necessarily front line, but he could definitely take some hits. Excuse me. Took a sip of coffee and it went down the wrong tube. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ooh. That was fun. <laughs> Alright, Lizard Man up front because we know... Actually, what does his stat line look like? Eh, evasion up. Nice. I'm really curious about the steel. If we get a kill with it, we steal a piece of equipment. That's interesting. Not sure how balanced that is, but we'll find out. And then we have Patricia over here. Who also needs to rejoin with the rest of the group. Alright. Just get our front line kinda together-ish. I mean, if they're gonna keep running at us, it actually would probably be best... No, okay, they stop. Yeah, I was gonna say, if they keep just running at us, we should just form up and wait for them to hit, but looks like they've decided to start their fight there. Or, you know, build their lines there. Go there. Go there. Right there. Okay. So the reason I specifically stopped there was to see if getting close enough will make them come to me. Because the way the systems work, especially with like magic only being usable before you move and most of your most powerful abilities being before you move, it's actually beneficial to be the one that moves last. I'm actually going to switch things up so that my thief is protected a little bit more. Alright, now can we get... Yes we can. Cool. Uh, would I rather be there, though? I think I'd rather be there. Alright. Dragon! And another Gigas. There we go. Now, are they going to come to me? That's the question. Yes, they are. Beautiful. Alright. So that means my dragons are going to be able to blast that guy. And hit a leader at the same time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh man, this is going to be a good time. <laughs> this is going to be such a good time. They've fallen right into my trap. Although they did faint my... They did faint my paralyzer. But I have a unicorn. Cure. Cool. Now then. First thing I'm absolutely doing. Acid breath. Zap. Not a whole lot of damage, but damage and they took that they didn't get counterattack. So this thing is non-elemental? No, it's red and white. Okay. Alright. It also has pretty low intelligence. Which means this should hurt a lot. This is not the guy I thought it was. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> this is, uh... Less amazing than I thought it was going to be. Until we got him mixed up with a different dude. Nice crit. Okay. 
I, I totally am willing to accept this 77 damage in return for, what was it, 150, 160? Oh. Archers. Oof. Leave my thief alone. Can't steal stuff if I'm dead. Okay, numb powder. 40%, 87%. There we go. Paralyzed. Beautiful. I mean, I have no reason not to, right? Or are elementals actually threatening? Uh, not really. Not really. Quick cut. Okay, so steel just does less damage, but if they have equipment and I get a kill, then it steals it. Alright. I mostly put him into Thief just to try it, because I don't think I have another Thief. And Thief is a class that did not exa exist in Legend of Forcemore, so I really wanted to try it. I'm kind of regretting the decision. <laughs> doesn't doesn't feel great. I mean, yeah, he gets evasion up, so once I master it, he has evasion up for every other class he's in. That's not super worth it if he just is useless for five levels. Alright, and a frost on you. Down to 98. Oh, I should have gotten the kill with her! Oh, I'm bad and should feel bad. Because he's paralyzed, so he's not going to be able to... What? Seriously? Eleven. Eleven. Oof. Sure. Alright. <laughs> okay. I give. And that's a zero percent chance. Oh boy. So I think my best bet here is to protect the guy that can paralyze stuff. Because that's useful. <clears throat> yeah, you can tell I've been streaming for eight hours, my throat's getting a little dry and raw. <laughs> oh, tier two, the thief gets pretty cool? Okay. I mean, I intend to give it a try, like I said. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the five levels in him just to see what it's like. I mean, I figure worst case scenario, he just has evasion up as a knight. Oof. Man, they are spot on with all these feints, though. Nice defense skill. Love to see it. Cool. Alright, so they healed him up real good. A lot. A lot, a lot. But he is still paralyzed. So I think instead of wasting another breath attack there, I'm just gonna hit him. I'm just gonna hit him with everyone I can. Like, surely he's gonna die now, right? And I think I have to heal my thief rather than the... I mean, hey, you know what? We got their knight to stand there and heal instead of stepping forward and punching us, so... It's worth. Absolutely worth. This is definitely not going nearly as well as I thought it was going to. <laughs> like, I, I legitimately thought this was going to be an easy clap. That's 
Oh, right. Didn't he have 0% or something like that? Or was that the silence? Alright. First things first. Hit. Nice crit. And that means... Does he have any equipment? No. But we're still gonna get the kill. Nice. Alright. Yeah. And then here... Once again, we can frost. And we will try to silence... Actually, that does nothing. Oh, then again, baby. Nope. Yeah, you just level up so you can protect more. I wonder if hitting him with the breath will actually knock him out of it. It does. That's awesome. Okay, that's so cool. Back down to 21 once more. Alright, so if somebody's dazed, we can use our breath through them. Yeah, if you want to keep burning heals instead of, like, doing damage, I'm happy with that. Completely happy with that. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, they do have a lot more heals than we do. A lot more. I think we're just gonna try to kill the big guy. And then retreat. Yeah. Especially with how much they're fainting us. Not ideal. Okay, once more. Punch. Punch. We're out of heals here. Oops. We probably should have used him to heal. Do we have heals left here? No, we don't have heals left at all. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's not good. <laughs> That's bad. That's so bad. Uh, sure. More experience means more mana. More mana means more heals next battle. And more heals. Are you serious? How is he not out of mana? How is he not out of mana? Oof. Okay, that's fine. More experience for the unicorn. Ranged guys hitting my thief. Not ideal. Not ideal. So yeah, we have no heals left. Okay. I really want to kill his big guy. But I don't think I'm going to be able to. Honestly? Do I just retreat here? I haven't killed anything, but I have gotten experience. <clears throat> So that's 85, and now our lizard man's at 136. The most we could do here is 95 or 120. He'd still have 160 left. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that's for the best. Just go in, smack something, get some experience. It's fine. This team is not as strong as I thought it was. Alright, Patricia! Smack? Oh, nice crit! Are we actually gonna get the kill? Do we have enough for... no, we didn't. <laughs> we do not have enough for breath. Nope. Not at all. Unfortunately. Alright, well... Let's just get a little bit of experience then. Alright. And... Retreat here as well. Alright. That's fine. That's fine. Hopefully we don't get punished. Oh wow, that... A, they still have heals, and B, he survived so long the Paralyze wore off. Or actually, did the Paralyze... disappear? Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. We're in trouble, I think. I think they're gonna kill him and possibly capture our... No? The, the unicorn's definitely dead, though. 100%. There, there's no way the unicorn survives this. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Goodbye, unicorn. I knew you well. And yeah, our dragon got with or you know smacked. Cool. All right, level four golem and retreat. Yep. All right, that's fine. So now we know they have a lot of faints, so we need to bring a lot of AOE. Like rocks. If we can pop an AoE damage that deals damage to the enemies and to our own people, we can knock people out of faint. They just had so many. Oh no, we killed an elemental in exchange for a unicorn. I'm happy with that. But yeah, they had they only had three. They only had three Gigases and Cyclops. But they hit us with so many faints. So I guess Gigas is the new rock. <laughs> okay, yeah, saw that coming. That's completely fine. And organization phase. Alright, and that is where I'm going to call the stream part one. Save. Alright. That. Oh. That makes a seven hour stream. I was off by an hour. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go have lunch and over on I believe it's Veracity Trigger is firing off a stream starting at three, which is in one hour from now. I think it's three central. So if you wanna check out more, if you wanna check out somebody who's better at the game, playing it more optimally. Go, go hit him up. Uh, link is in the description of this video for his YouTube channel, and his YouTube channel has a link to this Twitch, so I should actually just include a link to his Twitch as well. But uh, yeah, so again, after lunch, probably in four hours or so, I'm going to hop back on, and we're going to dig through files and see if we can mod the game a little bit. But for now... That has been my first ever stream. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, 
have a good one.